entire episode of one, two, three wrestling right here on SRB TV. I am Kirsten, as always, joined by the Nick Slate. Let's go. Mom. And on today's episode, we are heading to Walter's homeland as we are reacting to Bash in Berlin 2024. Now, of course, our dear friend Mo is not here this weekend because he's enjoying, he's out of town. We're not going to see him. But you will probably see him, more likely see him at all, our all out reactions, so stay tuned for those. But like, yeah, we're here. It's another international pay-per-view. Five matches, short card, great card. Oh, well, hopefully great card. Like, if, I think, yeah, it should be entertaining. Like, Walter's gonna make make that man that Randy's chest look purple more purple than the purplest grape you've ever seen. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so, sorry, I, I blanked for a sec, but yeah, let's get started, here's our reactions to Bash in Berlin 2024, so here we go. In the world of professional wrestling. Yeah, let me know, as always, let me know if the audio, you need to raise the audio or the audio. Mental. Oh, okay. You see what shirt I'm wearing? Yeah, you're wearing the Muda shirt I got you for Mania last year. I was just a wrestling shirt, but I'm doing laundry, so I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm like, not, no, I'm not wearing any, anything I just I just cleaned. I like, fuck that. The making of Bash in Berlin. What? Oh, Jesus Christ. Destination Berlin. Cool thing about going overseas, the crowds are so unpredictable in the sea of people. It's a surprise to us. It's a surprise to all the superstars. Oh yeah, did you see that somebody leaked? I think secure. I think arena staff leaked. Um, the wrestlers in the ring choreographing their stuff for the that raw that night. Yeah. Yep, and nobody else at all. But you know what's weird, Nick? What? They tell us, oh, this World Heavyweight title has no lineage attached to the previous ones. And yet, Orton brings up the lineage of the World Heavyweight title, and their montage about Walter's reign brings up previous World Heavyweight champions. Yeah, it before... annoys the shit out of me. It just makes no sense. It annoys like... the loving shit out of me. Tonight. Tonight. Like, I may, I don't know, maybe it's the um, spectrum part of me, but... I like I am very obsessed with title lineages and the history of it and keeping it straight, like everything. And it annoys the shit out of me how Triple H has basically said, Oh, I'm gonna bring back the cruiserweight title, but not that cruiserweight title. I'm gonna bring back the women's title, but not that women's title. I'm gonna bring back the hardcore title, but not that hardcore title. At least title. that had a different name. That had a different name. Like he keeps bringing back titles with the same exact name, but they don't have any connection to the previous titles. The cruiserweight title, the women's title, the world heavyweight title. He's done it over and over. Women's tag yeah. titles. Stop it. You know what they do? They can say so this person is the first ever this, this, this. Like bullshit. Bullshit. Mm, all a bunch of asterisks. Ugh. You know, as far as like, I, th I, th I thought it was a mistake to make the World Heavyweight title not a continuation, the original World Heavyweight title not a continuation of the WCW title. It was the same belt. So I think the WCW title and both World Heavyweight titles should be one t entire long lineage. Yeah. If I were, if I took over there to be able to be the first thing I did, it was fix all the title histories. The first thing I did. I mean, I would probably get some experts to help you with that and not just have it be you. It wouldn't that be hard. It wouldn't that be hard. Okay, so we also, are... I would, I would recognize Ted DiBiase's WWE Championship reign, and I would probably recognize also Antonio Noki's, even though that would split Bob Backlund's reign in half. We're realizing Inoki, but we're recognizing Inoki, damn it. <laughs> we're recognizing the Chin Lord. We're starting with Cody and Kevin? 
Yeah, this was kind of spoiled for me. I was trying to set up for the uh, opening show. What, they, for some reason, the first 30 seconds of their replay on Peacock is like the pre-show ending oh, for some I reason. That's also where Kevin's contract's up in December and he might not resign. We'll see. We'll see on that. We'll see on that. I mean, he had a weird gonna... promo, though, Cody. Like, you have a bad knee. No, I don't. You have a bad knee. No, I don't. Look, man, all my air championships have had a big asterisk on them. And you have a bad knee. No, I don't. <laughs> Literally, the pro sum up their promo on SmackDown. Yeah, look at that little... Like, I think he hasn't held the world title since 2017. Yeah, yes. Uh, Friday, he confirmed <laughs> it was like... It's been like... It's officially seven years since he uh, first attained the, a world championship in day And it was a shitty universal title. Hey, it counted. But they're still not getting rid of for some reason. Oh, it looks like Jeremy likes Prime. Because of course they do. Those savages. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Ooh! Ooh, I like this combo. Cole and Barrett. Hey, don't forget, I'm part German. Okay? Yeah, I know. So why aren't you commentating, Nick? Huh? Huh? Why aren't you commentating? It's good. It's about German heritage. We know how to say it. I speak it. Yeah. See, why aren't you joining Sebastian and Manu? <laughs> Hackle. So last name's Hackle. Huh. Hackle. Well, as long as that A's not an E, <laughs> then it'd be weird. Hey, look, at least somebody's not going to drive a golf cart into him. Yeah, I'm gonna... It still ticks me off how you find out the original plan for it was supposed to be Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho for the Universal title, not Goldberg, Brock Lesnar. Like, and Jericho look, we're, pa playing. we're past that now. And now we're going to get a documentary about it. Of course, you saw that, right? Mr. The yeah, they announced the Mr. McMahon documentary coming to Netflix soon. Which that's kind of a conflict of interest, isn't it? Considering Raw's going to Netflix in January. I don't think the deal had anything to do with that, honestly. Yeah, but don't you think Netflix is gonna be a little hesitant? To money talks. Yeah, WWE probably has more money to, to say. No, no, the amount of money Netflix gave. Yeah, money talks. Hey, well, I'm curious to see it. This is the one like Meltzer and Alvarez confirmed they did interviews for like a while back. Oh, I saw you, I saw you were upset about Meltzer's ratings. I wanted to tell you, man, Meltzer doesn't matter. Probably I know Meltzer doesn't high. matter. I know he doesn't. But like, seriously. So shit tight. I, look, I don't think like the women's match, the, what was it? Both women's matches like are like, were like, up there for like match the like high up there for match a year among others but fuck man they did each of them deserved at least four stars like both of them were good in their own ways the like world, the, the world title one yeah tbs there were some botches in there okay so the women's world had great story a solid story going into it and it worked throughout the match the uh, the uh, tbs one um had great in-ring work like both of them were great in their own right. They were good, really good in their own rights. Yeah, but you know, Melissa doesn't give a shit about story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, oh yeah, speaking of that, you see, I I know they don't matter, but we can bench him on while this intro plays. Fucking, he gives the fucking three way tag match five fucking stars. I know. I, 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 what? It had the young bucks in it. That's why. I know. That's why I thought too. I jokingly thought that too. I'm serious. Going, did you watch that match? That match was boring. That was not a five star match. They they don't even go like and it doesn't even get good till the third act of that match. I'd give it a three. I yeah, three I give about like a three, three and a half. Like it was not a five star match. I am sorry. He's smoking shit. But I and then obviously, of course, you can't help but to give like uh the main event five plus stars. I just think it's stupid he has plus five. Like what's it's we no no we're not gonna dive into that rabbit hole again. I'm just bitching only about the AW rings. I did see some some people saying that oh 
that moment at All In was was bigger for Brian than WrestleMania 30. I was like, oh, what are you fucking smoking? Yeah, it's you forget. Brian wasn't supposed to be in that picture at 30, apparently. Like Yeah, somebody I saw somebody put it paint it really good. Okay, so he said WrestleMania was just was Daniel Bryan after months and months of struggle facing Triple H one on one, beating him, and then going on to beat Randy Orton and Batista, all three guys multiple world champions. And remember, this was a big one. This was where we were still we were still deep in like the Vince era. Yeah. Eleven years ago, we made that man fucking pivot. Yeah. And, oh, uh, sorry, sorry. He had sorry. like the big, all those people and all those people, WrestleMania 30. The night ends with Daniel Bryan having a big moment compared to All In, where you had him beating a current one-time world champion with only a month of build-up with a needless retirement angle on it, and Hangman and Page interfered. Oh, so sorry. So how sorry. are they even remotely comparable? Like, yeah, it was a cool moment for Bryan. I'm glad he won a world, a world title at AEW, but it's not where close to his 30, since his WrestleMania 30 moment. Sorry, so, sorry. I meant, oh. I meant it was Punk that helped with that. Just saying. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> it, was, it was CM Punk. It was Punk leaving that helped out. But yeah, yeah, Brian. Yeah, yeah, Brian. Funny how Punk leaving leads to interesting things. <laughs> Fucking man it has an amazing domino effect on the pro wrestling world. Ah, <laughs> uh, so. He, okay. Like, fuck it. He gave Jack Perry a fucking character by leaving AEW. <laughs> and now Jack Perry's amazing. He should be facing Brian, though. It makes no sense. I I don't get, dude. I don't get that either. You're like, I'm. Oh, and then there's that report. I don't know if you heard that report. It came out saying, "Oh yeah, Christian was supposed to win that gauntlet match that uh Osprey won before Forbidden Door. That was the plan, but they scrapped it. I'm like, so wait, are you telling me they had a plan?" Since early June to give Christian Cage yet another world title shot, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me! Are you tell me originally Forbidden Door was gonna be Christian Swerve too. I I don't know, maybe, but the, apparently a report says they the plans got scrapped because I think even they they thought what you you just how you said that last sentence is like, should we just do that already? I mean, he didn't really win. Like I think that's what it was. So that's why I think it was scrapped. Well, oh, here's what I'm thinking. Oh, no, I, sorry, sorry. I love this chant. Both these wrestlers, both these wrestlers, both these wrestlers. So, you, oh, uh, so code quick, of I'm, honor, code of honor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Both these guys are former Ring of Honor world champions. Sorry, you were saying? Um, what, was I, what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. Oh, okay. Here's what I'm thinking why they're doing this with Jack Perry because they only had two weeks build and they wanted mm-hmm. to come Christian Bryan more time to lead up to, so they probably do Perry throw him to Brian at the for two weeks after two weeks then set up Brian Christian at Wrestle Dream and have like a few weeks to build for that. That's what I'm thinking they're doing. Then the meantime between there and now he faces Darby Allen for at, at Grand Slam. There's a report saying they are heavily apparently there's a report out there saying they're heavily considering giving Darby the world title up at a Grand Slam. I don't They're think, heavily considering. I don't think it's happening at Grand Slam. I don't think it's happening at Grand Slam either. Like, I, think, I know I, I know. Brian said the end Dynamite, like, once they lose this tile, then I'm going part-time. I but think, like, I think he should lose it at World's End. I think Brian should lose it at World's End. No, no, no. Um, Honestly, uh, full year. Because remember, he still needs neck surgery. Yeah, at the end of the year. Yeah, by the end of the year. And remember when World's End is, it's literally the last, like, Sunday of the year. Okay, okay, full year. But he's yeah, that's what I'm saying. I say he like something happens with Darby at Grand Slam. Either he beats him clean or shenanigans. Probably Christian might interfere. Mm. Then we do Brian Christian at Wrestle Dream, and then we and then we could do Brian Allen at Full Gear Passing of the Torch. Yeah, do like uh, do sixty minute Iron Man at Full Gear. I mean, if you want to. Dude, Bri- Bri- all of Brian's Iron Man matches have been fucking great. Hangman, been- MJF, like... I already have Iron Man on the brain because there's going to be an Iron Man match in the next TNA pay-per-view between Josh Ooh. Alexander and Nick Nimmin. It's going to be a false... Also, it's going to be a, a full one-hour Iron Man match, too, between Alexander and Nimmin. 
Oh, they're doing a rematch? Yeah, yeah, it emerges. I, I saw the tail end of that last night. I saw the tail end of that. And I'm like, that's such a boring finish to the Iron Man match. Wait a minute, wait. Has emergence already happened? Yeah, emergence was last night. Oh shit, I don't know. Sorry, I spoil <laughs> spoil. No, I no, I actually didn't spoil who won. I didn't spoil who won. No, it's okay. it was a weird gonna, like oh. the finish was like eh. Uh I wa I didn't watch it, watch it. Like I caught like the second half of it. Yeah, emergence was last night because I'm like I'm like I, I saw up like I saw a match update on one of the Facebook feeds I'm a part of. And it was like, oh emergence is tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I wasn't actually I wasn't at home. I, I after I came home from Jermaine's place, like the power was out in my house. It wouldn't be back up to like 10 30 that night. So I'm like, screw it. So I made sure dogs had plenty of water, cleaned up the inside of the house, and then went to my brother's job at the hotel. Okay. Uh but you know who showed up in, in, the, in the lead up to that? To before talk or about? after? Before. No. GBL. Oh, before? Okay. Well, Smyers for Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because GBL was a seconded him at Triple Mania and Triple A, where uh, Nemeth dropped the Triple A title to Alberto Del Rio, because of course he did. Um, I knew Nemeth wasn't going to hold Triple A title long. <laughs> but it's cool he was TNA and Triple A champion at the same time. That's good. Um. Yeah. Then, then like JBL's going on like a, a tour. He showed up in GCW. Now he showed up in TNA. Like I guess like he's taking advantage of not being on contract with WWE right now. I never thought I'd see JBL on the indie scene. I didn't think I'd see JBL on TNA. And I know. I was about to get that. Yeah. He's going under just the name John Layfield, obviously, because he can't call so. I still go going on to JBL. So much easier. Oh yeah, but he's he has his name John Layfield because they're the only John Brashaw. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I love how we're talking about TNA during a WWE show. Well, oh, TNA and AW things during a WWE show. Well, we were also talking about like AEW, but we're, we're we're trying to catch up on some news. Um, yeah. But speaking of this, before it happens, yeah, your nay Owens turns heel in this match. No, no, I don't. I think Owens is. I don't know. No, I don't think Owens turns heel. I don't think he needs to turn heel because, like, right now, that bloodline thing is not going to be stopping anytime soon. You, know and you, need, you need faces to take on the bloodline. So, as, uh, as, as much as we will want for that to stop with Kevin Owens taking on the bloodline. That ain't happening anytime soon. I'm sorry. Um, well, I think the bloodline's gonna be busy with Roman and, and whoever he brings in. Right. Cody. Um, Cody Rhodes. Cody, Cody Rhodes. Oh, now, so if, if only all you, you American crowds were this well tuned. <laughs> I know, like Kevin Owens is probably thinking, like, is there anything in WWE he can really do right now? He's been Intercontinental Champion. He's been United States Champion. He hasn't won the it's, WWE or World Heavyweight title, but is he, he's not gonna, he probably isn't going to be in contention for either of those anytime soon. After yeah, this. and of course, it's, it's like I said, he needs to tag team with his son. Yeah, he's won tag titles. Um, so Kevin Owens probably might think that there's more for him to do outside WWE. I just know everyone's going to like, oh, he's going to AEW because everyone goes to AEW. I'm like, so what? He could be lost in the translation again? Did you hear what he what he said? Uh, was it, I think yesterday or earlier today about CM Punk? What he's like? I, I don't care. Like I really don't. Like I just like he's here. I don't like if we work together, we'll work together. But I really don't. I don't hang out with the dude. I don't really care. It's like basically that's what he said. Uh, he said be he had better sentence to say it, but yeah, it's the equivalent. You say he's like I don't really care. Like if we have to work together, we'll work together. But I really care. Don't don't hang out with the dude. Like don't really care. <laughs> Like, you felt that I didn't watch the video. I, I think there was a video, but I didn't watch it. But I just read the paragraph, and it sounded like that was his tone of voice about it. <laughs> like, I don't really care. <laughs> like, if I have to work with him, I'll work with him. <laughs> so, basically, yeah, he'll with with punk, he's keeping it professional. I just realized I forgot my drink in the other room, so I have to smash to go get it. Mm. Move by Cody. Now the house is a new, a 
Yeah, to the viewing audience at home, this is my new place. This is going to be my office slash hobby room. So you can see a little bit of it back there with some, some clear stuff there. They do a tour sometimes. That's what everything's doing. Oh, you know, I got two. I was at BJ's. Um, what? So, you know, a whole, the, oh, is it the Smart Food Popcorn? Yeah. They had, they have, I bought it, Lay's Sour Cream and Onion Flavor. Mm. Oh, my God. I can't wait. Sour Cream and Onion is like one of my favorite Lay's flavors, too. Oh, man. Did you, okay, so you watched the Sonic the Hedgehog 3 trailer, right? What is it? What? Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Yeah, yeah, you can check out that trailer right here on this channel. I know. I know you did. You did, did you like that little promotion I slipped in there? The what? That little promotion I slipped in there for you. So you can go no. Watch. Oh, did you watch it, Kristen? Oh, yeah, we did. You can go check it out. It's called a segue, bitch. You know what's sad? My friend oh. Richard only seen the first film, haven't seen the other two. And my friend Jermaine hasn't seen any of them. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. They're good. I enjoy them. I'm look, looking forward to it. Um, Jim Carrey is going to be playing both Robotniks. I t that's hilarious. Like, Because I'm like, isn't his father technically supposed to be dead? <laughs> it's supposed to be his grandfather. And yes, he is supposed to be dead. But this isn't exactly the same. It's not the same continuity. I mean, they've already changed the continuity a lot. And here, at the end, you can also hear orchestral version of Live and Learn, which is dope. Like, Sonic was supposed to grow up with the other, with, like, with Tails on Morbius. But in the movie, he grew up on Earth. They met Tails during the second movie. Well, 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 Nick, it's because it's a multiverse thing, you know? You see, oh there's Earth God, One. I... That's the Sega-verse. That's where Sonic Genesis takes place. And, you know, um... Uh, actually, if I hear one more person say multiverse to me, I'm going to punch them in the fucking face. No, are you going to pistol whip them? I'll pistol whip them, yes. I'm hey, so hey, hey, Nick, what's that one thing where it's one person, but then it's another person in a different place, and then another person in a different place, but they're the same person, actually, in all, all those places? You mean a multiverse? Oh... <laughs> I'm just so sick of the multiverse being used as excuse for lazy bullshit. I know you already. Well, we're not going to dive into that here. That is saved for matches involving a member of the bloodline. <laughs> I can rant about that for for, for probably an hour. About the no, 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 no. You saved that for the bloodline matches. Unfortunately, there's no bloodline matches tonight. No, Mo doesn't like it when you talk about the MCU doing bloodline matches. I'm sure you'll be fine with it. I should probably do it on Mo's not here. <laughs> but yeah, Keanu Reeves fucking nails the voice. I mean, it's his like, voice. It's like Idris L was doing his voice for Knuckles. Also, somebody pointed out in every iteration, Shadow beats up Tails. Every, in every media, Shadow just beats up Tails. Yeah, but did you ever see one where Knuckle or Knuckles' wrist gets broken by Shadow? <laughs> like he's like snap. Fuck off. They fought Sonic X and, and Shadow beat him up pretty quick. I like. Did you ever watch Sonic X? I liked it. I liked it. I watched an episode or two here and there. I think the only thing I ever stuck with that show was the theme song. It was a good theme song. My only oh, issue, no. it yeah. was done by four kids. Which the voice acting was good, but because it was four kids, there was a lot of edit editing. They edited out a lot of the stuff, like violence and stuff like that. So apparently the Japanese version is better, but you can't get it. And like the third season was weird because they go out into space. <laughs> and they had that flower girls introduce. That third season was weird. And of course, my main issue with Sonic X is my, was my main issue with the Sonic movies. There's too many humans. I don't need no. The only human that should be in the Sonic series is for Button. Hey man, Donut King deserves to be there. Donut Lord deserves to be there. Donut Lord. No, I I'm kind of tired of it. Like I'm hoping if they do a Sonic Four, they move it to to Morbius. No, not Morbius. I think, Mobius, I think this could be the last one to be. If I'm being honest, 
because like Jim Carrey like was already about to retire, and they convinced him to come back to uh, to oh. do Robotnik again. Speaking of uh, Jim Carrey, this is his first trilogy. He's only done like four other sequels, and he's never done a third movie in the series. Mm. So yeah, Jim, Jim this is Jim the Sonic movies are Jim Carrey's first trilogy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, I'm, they, I'm. Oh, go on. I think they said they could convince him, like he no longer considers acting his main thing. But they could probably because like, hey, can you just bring him back to Robotnik every couple of years? Like, okay. I mean, the dude's been, dude. I look at IV. That dude's been part of business for four decades now. I know. That's insane. It's crazy. Bro. He was but a child on In Living Color and the whitest person there. <laughs> Look at Jim Carrey. I saw an article say like the worst movie of the 2000s and it showed how the Grinch stole Christmas. It's like, I will ki- kick your ass. That movie's fantastic. Oh, oh yeah, that one? You know yeah. what? That one? I think people gave a lot of plat- plat- flack when it first came out, but it was fucking... It was actually, you look back at it, it was good. Yeah, yeah. it went so, a couple directions and didn't need to. But it was still good. I've seen that movie like 20 times. I still laugh hard at all the same jokes. That movie still makes me laugh. Yeah, I think the any other Grinch adaptation has its little bits of positives here and there. Even the Cumberbatch one, which I still haven't seen. The big Cumberbatch one's boring. Like, at least they give him a backstory about why he like legitimately hates Christmas. We've got a backstory in a Jim Carrey movie, too. Well, at least the I know I actually you know what's funny I actually like the Illumination backstory more. Like it's like yeah no we adopt them and it was every time during Christmas so yeah fuck Christmas. <laughs> Grinch gets the girl in Jim Carrey movie. I mean, okay. You think really, that's a Ron Howard film? I know it's a Ron, I know you know it's a Ron Howard film because his brother's in it. That was pretty nice. Yeah. It's been a good match so far, folks. We're just we're watching and talking. Which has been a straightforward good wrestling match. That's the right. That look at that. That is oh. dope though. That top rope uh senton. Uh I still think that T Rex uh tattoo is badass. That is fucking one. Yeah, that's awesome. I what I left dinosaurs <laughs> like like, I'll never get a tattoo because I hate needles, but that is a cool tattoo. I, for me, I think I just couldn't last that long with somebody taking a needle to my skin. <laughs> like, I don't mind needles if, like, it comes with donate, donating blood or something like that. But, ooh, ooh, almost got the stunner. Ooh, crossroads. No, no, he's going to need to do the tri-state roads. No. He's going to need to do tri-state roads. Is the Crossroads really a finishing move? He doesn't finish people anymore. You know what? I give New Japan this. They they make the signature moves and all their other moves deadly against like a ham and egger, for instance, or a young a young boy. But then, like when they fight an actual bigger competitor, it becomes more of a challenge. Like I, I like I give that to New Japan. At least they make them running kicking out of a signature move or something like that. More prevalent. I did the problem with AEW when they do it. I feel like they do it too, like one time too many sometimes. Mm. Like, like, did we need two finishers? The like two finishes to this match, you just finish it here. Like, Swerve no sold the, the, the running knee, which is took it out. Like, people like Batista and Randy Orton, Triple H. I'm like, no, no, don't. Swerve is not big enough to no sell that. I'm not even big enough, I mean, physically large enough to no sell that. Oh, that was a brain buster? I look like a superplex. Yeah, he looks like he's taking a nap right now. He's probably been up since like 7 a.m. that day. I know we'll get into this with our all-out predictions, but I kind of think the steel cage match should be the main event. We'll see. It's just that Perry Bryan isn't that big of a match. I know it's the world title, but I think the cage match is... is has more history to it. And it's a cage match. Yeah. You know, there was this funny photo of somebody posted up of um 
when Kevin Owens took a picture of Cody and his daughter Liberty, and mm-hmm. then Liberty's giving Kevin Owens this glare, this 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 like glare in the photo. Mm-hmm. And my favorite comment is because someone was like, I "Wonder what she's thinking." She's pro- and the comment says, "Who?" She's basically saying, "Who? Who told you this was open mic night?" <laughs> I'm like, I see that. <laughs> So so far, Cody and his title of runs. He's beaten AJ Styles. He beat Logan Paul. He's beaten Solo Sokola, and now he's facing Kevin Owens. It kind of shows how li- Raw's got more of the heavy hitters than SmackDown does right now. It's probably because Raw's going to Netflix. And for yeah, all it's yeah, I st- oh, go on. And if Raw gets Roman Reigns, SmackDown needs to get some. They need. They need SmackDown needs some more bigger stars. Oh, he was trying. He was trying to go for a t- uh, Avalanche. Uh, Cody Cutter. I guess his knee is hurt. Oh, oh they called their knees. Come on, attack the knee. Come oh, on, they- make Rey Mysterio proud. KO, you're not gonna win like this. Is he? Is that, we are, is no he way. still? Hey, is is Co- Owen still repping PWG on his his uh, his ring trunks? I don't know. I can't tell. Oh, come on! You know what? You know what you have to do, bro. Dude, it's for the you w- have to go to that th- that place. This is for the WWE Championship. Yes, vintage. Say it with me, Nick. Vintage KO. I'll never make try to make vintage a thing. Mike McCall's made that so cringe. Yeah, he is. On his trunks, he's still repping. Yeah, he's still repping uh, PWG. Oh, no. Wait. Is it? Kind of? Kind of looks like it. Oh, I love that. Because... Uh, like Wade, Wade was doubt, doubting what Kevin Owens was gonna do. Uh, he's like, he, he, Owens looked at Wade and went, like, ah, shut up. <laughs> yep, Kevin, Stunner's not gonna do it. You're gonna have to hit him with the power bomb. I do love why he he always says why he changes up his finishers. It's just so it doesn't his his finisher doesn't get stale. And nobody else is using the center. Yeah. I do miss his uh, America gimmick when he was U.S. champion. He played first the face time. of America, where he went. St- he had the one. He walked around his face. There was a guy. It was a guy on wrestling. Re- the guy on wrestling with regret, and he came up with a th- song for him that went like America, 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 America. <laughs> to K- Kevin Owens, do you know, like? Okay, that's cover. Oh wait! Oh, crossroads. Tri-state I roads. It's time for the tri-state roads. Tri-state roads. Is that name just somebody made up, or is he actually called that? No, I called. Remember, I named. I named it that. Okay, trademark. Tri-state roads. Because oh oh, got him again. Ooh, you need to tweet Cody Rhodes and tell him to call. One two, kick out. You need to tweet Cody. So God, have... I love international crowds. Hey, usually Germans are not so emotional. <laughs> don't make you don't make them hear you say that. Otherwise, they're just gonna go neutral on you. I know the Germans can uh, be what very. What did you mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> oh no, they can be emotional. They just can't be funny. Oh, I still love Robin Williams' response. To that German interviewer. Yeah. He's like, why do you think there's not much comedy in Germany, Mr. Williams? He's like, probably because you killed all the funny people. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a really good one. <laughs> oh. oh. That was, I love his... Uh, uh, is this... Yeah, Swanton. Yeah, right. Swanton, yeah. Every time I hear the word Swanton, I just think Wanton, then I get hungry again. <laughs> Oh. Okay, there he goes. Finish the Tri-State Roads. You know what? I think this, this isn't over. I think KO's going to 
realize what he should have done. I think Kale's going to turn heel after this, and they're going to have a rematch. Like, let's pay for you after this. It's bad blood. Yeah, that match is good. Crowd helped it, definitely. I think Kale can turn heel after this. You think he's turning I still, I don't know. I don't think he's turning heel. No, he didn't pull the trigger, and he's going to realize that he, 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 he held back. To be fair, no, he did. He did attack his knee outside the ring. Yeah, but he didn't do the pow pop up power bomb. If he did the pop up power bomb, he could have had a one. Oh, talk I bet you right now, next match is for the women's tag titles. Ugh. That's gonna be my piss break match. I hate to say that. My knee. You know what? I'm going to say this. It's not just a women's tag team. It feels like Triple H doesn't give a shit about tag team wrestling right now. And I don't understand. That feels weird. Like, when's the last time either tag, any of the tag titles felt relevant? I don't know. When they split them. <laughs> when they split them again. Yeah, and then Miz and, and Archer didn't do anything really. Judgment Day haven't done anything with it. Well, to be fair, I don't like what they did in um with the the tag title was it the WWE tag titles. I know, I know. Like, I get to that. Uh, they didn't do anything with it with Theory and Waller. They didn't do anything with DIY, and it, and they did this weird thing with the Bloodline where they had Jacob give up his part, which I freaking hate when they do that. It makes the title history look weird. Here, if he turns heel, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go or off you. I don't think he's turning heel. If he does, I'm sorry, I love you right now, then yeah, I'll leave. <laughs> yeah, see, they're even saying it. Oh God! This is what it, this is what AJ Styles did before attacking him. No, 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 I didn't do it. Uh, he wouldn't let him raise his hand. Yeah. In case you've been living under a rock, give us a fucking date. I know what this commercial is. I've seen it like fifty million times already. WWE is on fire right now. Give us a date. Give me 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 a date. I'm not stopping this. Give me a date. Give me a date. Give me a date. Bag me off a piece of that. Give me a break. I'm ready. Tell me when. Ah! When do tickets go on sale? You fucking cowards. Have you checked it lately? I don't know. Did you check what? Check what, Nick? Check what? I don't know. I just saw I have always been monitoring the situation. And so far right now, there's been no word on when they go on sale. No word. No word. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I'll be right back. Give me a drink. Bring me a drink. <sighs> Freaking hell. Starting, starting September 13th. Bash facts. Bash facts. Bash facts. Bash facts. Great couple of days here in Berlin. Wow, they are very green. I just 
in general, literally very green. Very, very green. 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 Yep, called it. Yeah. They're wearing bright green, dude. I'm not kidding. Why are they green? I don't know. Do you know? I mean, I asked you first. Watermelon. And here we go. Hope everybody's ready to be neutral. I just don't care. I'd rather Unholy Union win because they could. But I think it's, they're going to give it back to. Because I don't know. They're probably not going to do Bianca versus Jay to WrestleMania, which that's not a match I, I want to see. To pick. You don't want to pick to uh, win it? No to pick win? I don't give a sh- I just don't care about Jake Fargo. I just don't. They gave her Sting's AEW entrance. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see if Tippick tip wins it. Oh, uh. Can't okay, see if you get the joke. <laughs> no, what the fuck are they called? The, the, per, the, the fusion, huh? Uh. Yeah. Fusion Collective, whatever dumb name it is. Yeah. Really? I mean, I've seen some of those action figures. <laughs> they look big. Some of them look big, right? That was the improved version. <laughs> to be fair, Michael Cole is, is in amazing shape now. Like, absolutely amazing shape. Nowadays, this is the only reason I like seeing Bianca Belair more. Not because, like, she, she's tiring, because thank God they kept her fucking theme for so long now. Uh. Where's your dog go? In the other room. Resting. A lot of green. Hello. Did I ever tell you I tried finally tried uh back in March I finally tried one of those uh uh shamrock shakes from McDonald's? Like what? A oh, shamrock steak? Yeah. Oh, man, this when I think of McDonald's, I think of sludge. Yeah, I, it's just, it's not bad. It's just really minty. Like, did you try the Grimace shake? No. It Because I know better. It looked gross. Like, it looked like if I drank it, I turned to a Toxic Avenger. I mean, but you would have really cool abilities, though. I would be ugly as hell. But you have really cool abilities, though. Many changes. Only 77 days. Darn. Yeah, that's the Kaylee Ray doing oh, doing pretty good. No, I like her. And I, it, it took me only took me a few. It only took me years to realize how hot Isla Dawn is. <laughs> I think, look, it was that uh, it was that legendary uh, Nick Aldis photo, where he's just glaring, <laughs> like. Where I went, wait, because I like when I was watching NXT UK, I was like, she looked. I mean, she's looked great this entire time. What the fuck? Like plans for NXT Europe, dude? Do you even care about that? I mean, I, I like to the European title come back. 
The answer is no, Nick. But the watch it be, no. oh, it's the European title, but it has a separate lineage. Like, fuck you! It's all right. Deep breaths, Nick. Uh, man, I don't even know what this match is. Killer. Hmm. I gotta look at the Soros. Find an alternate word to use. Like lizard. I wonder what black, white, and green mix together it, uh, makes. I wonder what color that makes. Grayish green. What? A greenish gray. Greenish gray? Well, you mix black and white, it's gray, and you mix gray with green, it's greenish gray. So colorblind green? Yeah, I've been finding out more facts about like colorblind people like once in a while, like because they have that new those new those glasses that lets them like see color better. Yeah, I'm slightly colorblind. Like it's hard for me if I had to really focus sometimes. Like today when I was at work, I was looking at these tickets. I was like, oh, these tickets are yellow, and I focused on. I was like, no, these are these are lime green. Yeah, it's interesting how like it. it's not that like. People who have colorblindness can't see color. They can, but it's like very muted for them. Like very muted for them. It's not like they just see in black and white. Colors. Like I had trouble sometimes with dark blue and purple, or dark green and brown. Yeah, like this over here. This cover for the sofa is blue. What's up? It's blue. Yeah, this is blue. See, to me, it looks a little purple. No, it's blue. Trust I believe me. you. If this if it was purposeful, you would know I got it from a Spencer's. And I didn't. Let's all learn to count in German. This is as funny because I know more French words, I know German words. So, <laughs> here, Span you want know Spanish for? Uh, I think this is right. I hope that's my dad. Please, Spanish for asshole, bendejo. I know, but that one, yeah, bendejo. Yeah, bendejo. <laughs> Dog, like you paddle. I think can't roll, I can't roll my tongue. Mighty Golden's in our one. Oh, I didn't tell you I was watching the near newest because their OSW is finishing up their uh, look at the main event mafia arc and like. They got to um, what was it? Victory Road 09. Mm -hmm. It was what was it? Sting Styles for the heavyweight title. Mm -hmm. And but then no, uh, they it's funny they talk about the women's knockouts tag title match, where what was it? The Von what was it? Lacey Von Eric so, makes out with uh like like kisses the ref to um kisses the ref. To convince her that to, to convince him to let her stay, and so he gets a cheer for her ring outside because of the kiss. No, I remember that. That was funny. And then Earl Hebner comes yeah, I know. in, and then he he gets on, makes out with Lacey, and then tells her to get the fuck out. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> that was funny. I was gonna say the Lacey Von Eric, uh, the worst wrestler in the Von Eric family, unfortunately. Yeah. She did not inherit her dad's skills. I mean, definitely inherit her mom's beauty, though. Yeah. But yeah, man, the man of the mafia was fucking great. That was such a great era. Yeah. Of all the NWO ripoff groups, the man of the mafia was the best one. Mm. Yeah, watch this sometime. Have you watched, ever watched OSW Review? I just don't have time. I just... I'm, I, I, I'm so far behind on everything. We have to watch all of it. Like they, they do have like playlists. Like they just wrapped up the main event mafia arc right now. 
Um, and they, they're not they're not gonna reveal for a few months what uh, they're not gonna reveal for a while what their next story arc they're gonna focus on is. Yeah, unfortunately, they're getting if they're going through the, they're going they're getting up to the Hogan Bischoff era, which is where is the beginning of the end for that for TNA being on top for where it was. Man, I was looking at the ratings. TNA used to get like three million viewers every week. AEW can barely get a million. You can't even get a million. Isn't that crazy? I mean. Yeah, this was and this was before like like where where we're at now with wrestling where there's like many different avenues now. Like for wrestling. TV, ITV canceled TNA when it was getting way like it was the highest rated program. And you know why TNA wasn't canceled because it was doing bad in the ratings. It was like their highest rated program. It got it got canceled because Spike TV decided to change its pro change it from being uh male oriented to be something else and now it's what the fuck is it called now? Asking the wrong person. Uh, and that gave I do. the impression that TNA failed when it wasn't even their fault. Into the networks, mm-hmm. the network executives. Yeah. And then they struggled. You know, I think they went to they went to Destination Truth, then Pop TV. Then I think it was there. Then it was the Axis. It was you know it's funny too. They um they they because they talk about all the times they tried to reunite the main event mafia after their official breakup, <laughs> and then the first time it's like okay, uh, let's see, what about Booker T? No, he he no he re-signed with WWE. Oh, what about these also re-signed with WWE? Emeritus was before that. Oh, I remember Punk Nash yep. feud. When they tried to bring, they tried to reunite the name of the mafia, and it's like Scott Steiner came back and helped Kurt Angle. <laughs> Booker, they lost Booker T. They Ooh, lost nice. Kevin yeah. Nash. And then he's like, "Well, fuck it." <laughs> then eventually, we got the name of the mafia back together. And that's when, um, that's when uh, Ma- then Magnus, now Nick Aldis, was a member. That eventually led to him turning heel and having his run with the TNA World Title. Oh, the Hernandez Rampage Jackson thing. We're like, yeah, neither of them actually fought each other. Shoot, fought each other. Also, they never came back to the storyline because <laughs> of injury. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> oh, and then Ken Anders, oh, was it Mr. Anderson's iconic look when and- Hernandez first debuted? Mm-hmm. Like the. That. <laughs> Ken Anderson ended up having a pretty decent run to TNA. He got two world title runs, but they're only both a month long. Mm. That's better than he got in WWE. Yeah. We had his brain to make stolen from him because Randy Orton didn't like him. Oh, she got it right that time. So I made a good point. Uh, so I was watching somebody's Clash of the Castle review. The, I have to agree with them. I think AEW did a good job uh, showcasing uh, Jade and WWE has. Like with AEW, they made a specific kind of a uh, specific kind of match where it made her look dominant regardless of her actual in ring skill. They just put well, her... WWE threw her, threw her into the like NXT kind of equivalent. Where is have her doing matches where you can tell she's still green? I mean, figuratively in this case, it's still green. She's been wrestling long enough to where being green is not an excuse anymore. She should have already picked it up by now. To me, like, AEW just put her in squash matches, and WWE is trying to make her actually wrestle. So in WWE, she's been more exposed. If she hasn't picked it up now yet, she's not going to do it. The only reason both AEW and WWE hired her is because she has a good look. Oh! 
Who's that? Oh, I see. Oh, that would have been cool if she pulled that off. That would have been cool if she pulled off what she was trying to do. Oh. One, two. Nice timing, Jade. Nice timing. It's just like eventually, I guess WrestleMania is going to be off the bar versus Jade. I'm like, I don't like. Okay. A bit. I, if we're there, if we're out, luckily for there, I'll just be my my piss break. <laughs> so I go get, get some popcorn or something. Are you gonna try to watch? Uh, t- oh, are you gonna try to watch No Mercy tomorrow? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be busy tomorrow. I mean, no, I, I'm not asking if you. I'm just saying in general if you're gonna watch it. Probably not. I can't remember the last time I cared enough. If, the, probably the next time I watch an NXT event is okay. That's impressive. Hold on, I thought. Ooh. Alexander, uh, like, because the main event is uh, Hen- how is it, Hendry uh, Page for the NXT title. I know Trick Williams is a special guest referee, but I still have a feeling Josh Alexander's gonna interfere. I don't, I don't think Hendry's winning the NXT title, at least not yet. No, I my prediction is Alexander's gonna cost him. Yeah, because they're gonna do their match about. I think it's Battle for Glory and Halloween Havoc are on the same weekend. So. Yeah, dude, there's like a TNA show, WWE show, and NXT show all this weekend. At the very weekend. Man. I don't know. I don't know. What I'd probably do is Battle for Glory, do Joe Hendry versus Josh Alexander. Oh, nice timing on that. And at Halloween Havoc, I do a reunited North against Joe Hendry and Trick Williams. We'll see. At least Trick Williams still has something to do. They're getting to keep him relevant. Yeah. Okay, that was nice. Ooh. That was nice. That was very nice. It is crazy how Joe Hendry is like. He's like so big in two companies right now. Do you imagine Joe Hendry at a WrestleMania and the entire crowd singing the song? What about him being one of uh, his reti- – well, seen as retirement matches? I think it would be good, good. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. Called it. Now they're going to feud with the Fusion Powered Engine Collective. Okay, new lesson, WWE. If you're gonna have a title change, don't let it always be the women's tag titles. Like this is the second international show in a row you've done this. Well, they got a 77 day title reign. It's not bad, dude. On average, it should be at least a hundred. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That match. Oh, look, the match was good. It's like the. Jade's but Jade's looked better. Like this was the best Jade's looked in a while. But like, yeah, it was good. But like, just I don't have any faith in the women's tag titles. You've never made me believe. Like, I like, maybe except for like the first two runs with them. What was it, Bailey and Sasha being one of them? Like. Okay, there's some legitimacy there, but after that, it was just complete dog crap. It was, it was actually, you know, it was weird. It was good during the pandemic because you had Bailey and Sasha get them again. You had the Kabuki Warriors. Uh, you had Alexa and, and uh, Alexa Bliss and Lindsay, Nikki Cross. The fastest, the fastest oh, yeah, we're doing a women's tournament of this now because that's the joke. What? Oh, oh. The speed need a man and a women's title. No, but Twitter does. The speed. Oh, we're getting speed tag titles next. That would make no sense, honestly. Yeah, apparently I forgot to mention that there's a ru- <laughs> Apparently, I think it was the the governor of Pennsylvania. Or like the mayor of Penn or Philadelphia, I forgot who. Apparently teased like that mania is coming to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania again in like 2026. 
And then he deleted that tweet. I'm like, <laughs> yes or no? Yeah, that's, that's still a lot. Oh, you see what they're doing too for the first couple of uh, tour shows for NXT? Yeah, they're having. Uh... Yeah, Vince is going to go on tour again. It makes sense. You want to get some people, you have a reason to show up. Yeah, but their hometowns. Like. I've been I've been St. Louis once. It was nice. I didn't get to go in the arch, arch, whatever arch. Ooh, are we gonna get more bash facts? I did go to um, the St. Louis Zoo. It's a really nice zoo. Mm-hmm. Uba Arena. Starting general. Spoke to this man earlier today. He admitted he had butterflies. He has butterflies in his soul. Oh, there you Getting ready. Oh, that reminds me. You see, like, after they chase off Kevin Owens, he, you know, I'll be here. He, he, he gets Cody Rhodes. like, they don't have adrenaline in their souls. <laughs> What's next? Oh, yeah. The match is sponsored by Batista's new film that Drew McIntyre's in as well. It's a fun... Have you heard the plot of it? Killer's Game. Yeah. Have you heard the plot of it? Oh, is that the one with the killer has, like, cancer or something? Yeah, the killer gets diagnosed with cancer and it's inoperable. So he orders out a hit on him so, so, he can, so somebody, a lot of assassin can kill him. But then, after he puts in the hit, it turns out... It's okay. Yeah, it's a four corner strap match, dude. It's back. Way to win. It's, it's a four corner strap match. Of the ring. Because we need an excuse to go to a third ma- rubber match. Then they should have um, made a bull rope because it's traditionally supposed to be a bull rope. But anyways, yeah. But uh he puts out him so because he's been told he's been diagnosed with cancer, but then finds out almost immediately after putting the contract that no, he doesn't have cancer, and now he can't reverse the uh the, the uh, contract. Even though he put it out on himself. Yeah. That's kind of funny. <laughs> it does, you know what? It does look funny. It does look like fun. It really does. And even an interview with Chris Van Fleet for the movie, he even bring like Batista bring because he, he gets asked if he's willing to return. He's like, I'm fine with, with how my story ended in WWE. Yeah, I saw that when he said that. Yeah. I, and dude, he has gotten... Wow, he is the skinniest he's been since he was a teenager. Well, he had no reason to work out anymore. You gotta remember, Batista started wrestling older than most people. He's actually older in Triple H. Dude was in both Blade Runner, a Blade Runner film, and a Bond film. Like to be fair, though, he didn't really talk in the Bond film, but yeah, none of those films were very good. Well, yeah, it was it was uh, Spectre. Yeah, Spectre wasn't good. Even I know Spectre wasn't good, and I'm not a judge of character when it comes to Bond films. Um, Skyfall was fucking great, though. The Daniel, Daniel Craig started off so good with um, with uh, his first film, Casino Royale. Casino Royale is one of the best Bond films, and then every and then the rest of his films. The big one of the biggest problems with his films is they try to make them all one cohesive storyline. When the whole point of Bond's film is supposed to be Adventure of the Week. Every film is supposed to be a different adventure. And they try to make it so melodramatic. And Bond's like, oh, it's like, it's not about who Bond is. Bond's a suave, kick ass, steal your girl, smoke a cigarette. That's James Bond. And sleep with your girl again. Yeah. Because he's, he's like, available. James Bond's on about my feelings. Oh, my feelings. Shut up. That's not James Bond. Dude. I all I've I haven't seen No Time to Die, but all I've heard about it is it's a Ooh. Metal Gear Solid movie. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's all I've been told. I'm like, what? Fucking <laughs> wishes of a Metal Gear Solid movie. It's so stupid. I don't what's, care. What's fun f- oh fun skyfall fact. The caretaker of his family's old estate is Albert Finney, who starred in a, a back in the uh, I think seventies or eighties, I don't remember which. Starred in a adaptation of A Christmas Carol, 
And that's that's my dad's favorite uh, Christmas Carol film. Cover finish. It's been a long time. Yeah. I just hope there's a rumor that they're going to reboot James Bond again and actually set it in the 60s, which is makes that's what they need to do. James Bond doesn't work in the modern day. He works during the, the Cold War. That's how he's always worked. That You know what? That would be a clever twist if the next Bond film goes back to an earlier time, like earlier yeah. decade. Yeah, said during the Cold War, Bond works during the era of spies, during the Cold War. Hey, dude, good news. We're on the third match of the card already. Yay. It's hilarious how they had Living Color do a reorchestrated, like, re rearranged version of the Cult of Personality. <laughs> and you can tell that's the sad part. Because I used to, yeah, that's actually just a song alone is a good, it's a good song. Hey, dude, you see what it's like when you get, like, actual songwriters to write your songs and not those freaking hacks you got writing now? Yeah, for Rebel. I swear to God they're using AI. Like, you're right, they're using AI. At this point, yeah, there's there's only a handful of good, so, good, good songs left. And that's because, our, A, there's an actual band that wrote them, or B, it's either C. Foss or Jim Johnston wrote them. Yeah, I can see, like, a Sam Punk's theme, Cody Rhodes' theme. Randy Orton's themes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Either it's either it's a band actually singing the song for them, or it was written by C. Foss or uh, Jim Johnston. It's his third strap match. Oh. Wow, he's undefeated in strap matches. Okay. I mean, two and two and oh. This is the third one. Okay. That's kind of nice. That they mentioned his time in OVW. And if and it, and if this and if our prediction come if our prediction comes true, it'll be the third. It'll be he'll be three and oh. Yeah, I I still think my theory is right, and they're going to pull a Great American Bash. They're going to try to pull a Great American Bash. Just to justify a uh, rubber match inside Hell in a Cell. So it's like Seth Rollins actually hurt or something. He's been gone for since no, no. He, um, I, I think they wrote him off for one reason or I, I haven't seen why though. But they just wrote him off. He's actually like they just wrote him off for a bit. Yeah, I guess there's the Bronson Reed just feeling with Braun Strowman. And then I have a feeling they're going to make Braun put him over. But man, Braun Strowman, like I like Bronson Reed, but Braun Strowman's way better than him. He shouldn't be losing. Do you Braun Strowman? I love that video he sent. Yeah, that's fun. About the way he eats. And it's really going, okay, I'm not paying for that. <laughs> I'm not paying that caring bill. I'm not paying that yeah, caring what's, bill. What's your typical breakfast? Like, well, if I go to Waffle House, I get this. It's like, Dude. like ten eggs with four yolks, uh, oh. two like two things that rounds of hash browns, uh, like two, like, two orange juices. Oh, I mean, he's a big dude. You gotta eat. Man, eggs sound really good right now. I used to make eggs all the time. I need to start making them. Don't say. Yeah, I, eggs are good. I, the fun fact about me is I uh, scrambled fucks with my stomach. <laughs> I think I always, scrambled legit fucks with my stomach. Like I can only eggs I ever do nowadays anymore, it, and be still be lucky. Hopefully, be lucky is uh, over easy. I prefer hard scrambled. No scrambled. I miss scram em scrambled and not having issues with it. Although, if it's made done right, I do like a good sunny side up egg. Yeah. There was funny. Um, there was a copy of um, I think it was one of the Ultimate Ninja Storm game, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games for PS3, and the version I got came with a short, with a like non-canon short. It, it was like a dream sequence of Itachi struggling to make the perfect sunny side up egg for uh Sasuke. 
I still have it on my P on my PS3 too. It's stupid. It's it's def it's uh, uh Barry obviously non canon, but it's hilarious how hard he's trying to make the perfect sunny side up egg. <laughs> what a breaking. Exa, ooh, Exa. You know what's fun about mine? S salt, like obviously mayo, but salt, pepper, a little bit of onion powder, and a little bit like a tablespoon of ketchup. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they say about a tablespoon or so of ketchup. It actually, it actually gives a more fragrant flavor. Hmm. Onion powder sounds good. Yeah, I just do. Uh, I just do pepper. I put like I put a little milk in it. Like when I I put a little milk when when I, when I scramble it up and then pour it in. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard some people do that. I've heard it's pretty good. It makes it thicker. The thing is, I had to get a small thing of milk. That'd be the only thing I use for because I can't drink milk whole. It makes me sick. You know the egg. You know the sunny side up eggs and egg McMuffins. Those are legit eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they actually have. What they do is they have like a like a frame for the grill. They have like a like a circular like a multi circular frame set up. So that way, they when they crack the eggs in, it forms the circular shape that's the right size for the McMuffin. Mm. Yeah. The only one that's like pre like frozen is their um I, I believe it's the uh when it's the scrambled egg. I just frozen. haven't eaten at McDonald's in so long. I just can't see their food as food. I only ever eat their chicken product anymore. Like, like chicken yeah. nuggets and their the McCrispy's not that bad, honestly. Their McCrispy. Yeah, when you find out how the McRib's made. Yeah, I know. There's a guy okay, I'll tell you about it too. There's a guy on YouTube, Steven Patula. Yes, Spatula. Uh, Steven Patula. He's an owner. He's a franchisor of a McDonald's. He work uh, office still works at, and he does POV for for his job, which they let him do because he's the owner. <laughs> and it's pretty good too. Like he's really good at his job. And they on one episode they show how to make ribs are done, and nothing surprised me about him. <laughs> my mom got so mad when my brother showed her how the chicken McNuggets are made. She said it ruined them for her because she loved them. Yeah, like you're. It's it's it's, it's it's chicken. It's not even. It's like. What do you, what, I wouldn't call that. It's chicken meat, but like eh, you don't want to see how it's made. Uh, it's like chicken. What's the word for? Did you see how like McRibs are actually made? How they were created? That's ridiculous. This is just trying to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> I'll be honest though, I love their McGriddles. I don't. It. I just their McGriddles are fucking amazing. Yeah. When I stick, but anything, I just stick. I honestly just stick with their chicken products. Like I said, their McCrispy or their um their chicken nuggets. I had to point out if I want to get a good breakfast, I'll just go to a breakfast restaurant. Like I found a good one. Uh. In town, it's called, it's called the Midtowner. Ooh, it serves breakfast. Oh yeah, whole meal breakfast joints are the bomb because yeah. it actually tastes like somebody just made you breakfast you could have made it. Yeah. <laughs> and then some. My dad doesn't like. Uh, we went to for his birthday last year. We went to Kiki's because we have one down the road from us. He didn't like how they did their uh, eggs Benedict. Yeah, we used to go to Kiki's all the time. There, there, there isn't one around here. Like, I think, I guess, I think that one, the one I want to make solid breakfast place around here. Yeah. So, so for we did but, this I mean, year, not oh. counting Waffle House, we have Waffle Houses. <laughs> yeah. So what we did this year is for his birthday, we went to Perkins because they have egg Benedict that he actually likes. Yeah, Perkins. Yeah, there's still Perkins uh, over on um, University and Forsyth. What was that other one? It's not Kiki's. It's the other breakfast franchise in Florida. Um, yeah. I hop. Uh, I kind of like Kiki's. I know there's a local hole in the wall joint called Jack and Mary's near me. Um, um, yeah, steel chair time. That's one thing I miss about living in Tampa, Orlando. There's more food options. 
Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Mississippi's got some good food. But not a lot of, like, like foreign food. You know what I mean? Like, we got a couple good Japanese places. Like, we got a good hibachi place. Still haven't found a good ramen place. Somebody told me one place to check out. I need, I need to go check that out. Look, you can find a good, decent ramen place in the middle of where you live. I used to say go for it. <laughs> Somebody told me where. I, I, I've driven by it, but I wasn't sure. Like, I'm pretty sure I live around, like, according to Uber Eats, I live around, like, three to five different, like, ramen joints. Yeah, I miss, um, let's see, what was that place called? We used to go, we used to have anime night all, all time there. Curry Lounge? Curry Lounge, yeah. Dude, I went to the restaurant, um, what was it? Uh, a couple months ago, I went to the restaurant below it, the one that sells, uh, Laojian food. Mm-hmm. That one's pretty good. Man. Yeah, I had their sticky wings. That was pretty good. I miss getting Japanese curry or just getting the, the rice, the rice and chicken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, need to, I, I can't find where it makes good j- curry. It's good. Not Indian. I like Japanese curry. Indian curry is too spicy for me. Look, if you can find good anything, uh, like a, any good Asian restaurant where you live, that's just a gold star in their book. There is a good. Like, there is a good hibachi place. My aunt took me took me there with her family. It's good. Ooh, nice. But she paid for it, so that was nice. <laughs> yeah, we just we saw just the generic Kobe's near us. Yeah, so look, a real hibachi place where you know the chef does like he throws the food in your mouth, all that stuff. Mm. So far, this has been a strap match. <laughs> it's been good, yes. But it's yeah, been think, what we were expecting for a strap match. Yeah, I think I missed both of Tampa. There was a great German restaurant and a great Russian restaurant. And I missed those. Yeah, the Russian place was called Babushka's. It was just a small little place. And it was actually just run by like this Russian grandma. That's why it's called Babushka and her family. Oh, so good. I, I would get like this. It was like this Russian lamb on top of yellow, Ooh. like this yellowish rice. It's oh, so good. Yeah, eating a Greek and Russian place, but I really like lamb. Oh, a table. Oh, there is a good Mediterranean place. I know. Like, a good Greek place. Nice. So there are some things. I just met. It was probably even in Florida, it was rare to find like a Russian restaurant. You don't see many Russian restaurants. You see, the Russians understand because they're all about meat. I feel that. Like, so the, so the Germans. Ooh, nice. Oh, Took nice. His fucking head off with that one. Uh, if this was a pinfall match, it would be over. <laughs> I love this. Look at this. Right into Ooh, it. Ooh, nice. It's still unbelievable how he discovered that finisher. Yeah, it was it. a botch. He discovered it on a botch. And like... Man, I wish I, I remember thinking about it. I have a nice German Stein that I got from Epcot. I don't know where it is. I packed it. It's somewhere. I don't have time to go look for it. And it sucks. The good, the good ramen place a friend of mine introduced me to, they moved to West Colonial. It's like, ah. Uh... You know what was a good, pretty good ramen place? Even like... That Naruto one in Naruto, Naruto. yeah, that was actually good. Yeah, that shut down. So I did. Oh, they no. According to their first off, they're saying they're they're uh, the statement said they're looking for a new place, but they said the reason is that like for what they were paying for rent for that place and the condition of place wasn't being upkept by the owners of that plaza. They Mm -hmm. they said it wasn't worth it. So how did they like license Naruto or something like? How are they doing? How's that work? I don't know. It's probably like like uh, Super Saiyan, which has three locations officially now. I know, but like, like there's no way that Funimation would let them do it without. So that's so happy as Funimation is. Oh, I'm sorry. Now it's just Crunchyroll. They absorb Funimation. Oh well, I I don't know. That would be a question I ask him. I only just found out. You know that uh, table spot. You know that gas station on um Alafaya and uh Colonial. You know how there's a uh yeah that gas Chevron. 
Uh-huh. There's a fucking video game store there now. In that gas station. There is? Yeah. Like, legit. There's a small shop connected on the ass end of the mart. It's it's Zelda themed. Oh, that sounds it's, cool. It sounds it's called Hyrule Kingdom. Oh, I just found about it cool. yesterday. I, I just found out yesterday. I haven't visited it yet, but I was like, because me and Jermaine were were going back to his place after BJ's, and like, Man. I'm like, wait, that's like, wait, when did they put up? Jermaine's like, yeah, it's been there for a while. A video I'm game. Like, did you see GameStop's gonna make retro stores? No, no, no. Okay, to clarify, no, what they're doing is. Some of their GameStop stores are now going to sell early previous gen stuff now in the stores. Mm-hmm. Select GameStop stores, not all of them, but select ones like the wa- the Waterford GameStop dude. That's going to be selling retro stuff, which is what they should have been doing. All- oh, dude, you see what he's doing? Yeah, he's doing. Oh, he is doing that Guerrero thing. I told you. I told you. Wait, doesn't it get reset if they get slammed or something? Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> nope, reset. Yeah, I just pumped it to any spot. <laughs> Now, what was the finish initially to that Great American Bash match? So, Eddie Guerrero jumped, thought he thought he jumped over JBL to get to the fourth spot, but then it turned out Kurt Angle did a replay and JBL's shoulder hit it before Eddie's hand did. And so, mm-hmm. JBL technically won. So, Kurt Angle screwed Eddie by, by in that regard. And that's how JBL became WWE champion. Which the main reason that happened, Eddie Guerrero actually mentioned one. Eddie wasn't really sold on being champion at the time; yeah. it was really tough on him. Yeah, and they basically challenged him, saying he's not as champion. Your job should be able to get anyone over, and he's like, "I'm going to get JBL over." So that's why they did like the whole JBL going to the border, which was hilarious. Uh, I was, like JBL throwing illegal immigrants over the, the border. That was fucking kind of funny as hell. Uh, the whole t- system, the feud between them, and then Eddie put him over there to be title. Yeah, Eddie got JBL over, and JBL became one of the most biggest heels of that era. He held it for two. And it's amazing how he. Uh, it's not no tap, no taps. Uh, yeah, it's amazing how he went from being Bradshaw in the APA to being there to be champion, champion Hill. How about it gimmick? worked? It worked mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Uh, uh, There's no point in tapping, dude. He ain't gonna let you go. McIntyre is passed out for in the pain. I mean, Bret Hart made Stone Cold pass out. Mm-hmm. To be fair, he was also bleeding. That's still a fantastic match. That WrestleMania 13, I think. 13. He's like, no. This is the this is this is it's like the equivalent or reverse struggle to make the tag, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, reset. Uh, they did a bull. Te- I know technically a bull rope and a strap match is the same thing. Uh, it's just no matter what you. But to me, I feel like the four corner thing should always be a bull rope. This feels like action. Because some strap matches aren't this. It's just you're connected by a strap and you hit each other with it. Uh, 
bounce, bounce back, back ability. I don't think it's a word, Barrett. He's also a tough Scottish bastard. The necklace. Oh, that's been uh, touching his Indian. junk the whole time. I wouldn't want it back. Can you keep it? My bracelet. Do you don't sniff it? You know what I do? I I I make a fake version of it, like a candy version of it. And you version. know what I do? I eat it in front of Punk. <laughs> eat in front of him. <laughs> Dude, I'm, 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 I'm. It will funny. never leave me now. <laughs> it's it, it, it's a it like, just eat my necklace. Come on, screw. I'm gonna write that one down. Time stamp. That was. <laughs> you know, I just thought about that. Like, this is the mind fuck pug. This guy. Oh, nom, 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 nom. This tastes like cherry. Funny as fuck. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Because you know what's funny? A lot of those candies look like that, too. Yeah. Uh. Oh, I'm going to sleep. Oh, that would have been cool if he landed on his crotch. He accidentally low blowed him. <laughs> Come on, pull Pete Dunn. Snap those fingers. Preferably in half. Oh, and second one. Yeah, I was gonna say there ain't no way in hell they're recreating they're recreating that that again with the going the other way around. Punk looks already gassed as it is. <laughs> you can expect him to carry out 230-pound Drew McIntyre on the ring. <laughs> I love that. Dude, just stay the fuck down. I love that. He keeps doing the GTS on on uh, McIntyre. Dude, just go. No, you don't it's need right the crowd to no. for this shit. Finish this match. We got, they'll guess, two more left. I got one. I actually don't, don't remember what's going to be the penultimate match. I got to finish whole kick island, damn it. Is he going to do another GTS? <laughs> I know you're talking about One Piece, but I would love to finish a whole cake right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just finish this match. You're dragging it out now, boy. Boy. Oh, oh he's going to take the bracelet back. Just take the bracelet. Let this end. Penguins. Yep, as expected. Oh, yeah, that's a fun finish. It's like, stay the fuck down. <laughs> dude, you, dude don't kiss it. That was on his junk. Yeah. Uh, he first. He kissed it. Ew. That was fun. Okay, now do we keep it? That 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 was a fun finish. That, okay. I mean, that was a fun match overall. Okay, let Punk keep the bracelet. Now I have to fight him on sale. I drew in. Rubber okay, take match. Take that bracelet home and don't bring it to work with you anymore. Leave it at home. Put it in your safe. The make sure the code is not your wife's birthday or your dog's birthday or your birthday. Or your birthday. Make sure it's not one, two, three, four. I did love that first one when he came back in the ring and McIntyre just pops him with the claymore. That was pretty dope. You tell me, I think like here what that combination. I think the joke from Spaceballs is like, what's the what's the combination to the airlock? It's like one, one, two, one, two, 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 two three, 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 four, four. Four is like one, two, three, four. That's like the kind of thing an idiot put on his luggage. And then Mel Brooks comes in and he's like, it's one, two, three, four. It's amazing. It's the same combination of my luggage. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, he's making Mel. Well, Spellbrook stuff. He's making. Was he making history? Of the yeah, pot? apparently he's making um another Spaceballs thing. Which it can work if you really make fun of Disney Star Wars. Just really make fun of them. It can work. You it, just make that sisters cousins roommate joke. Just add like five more to that. Disney is prime parody right now. It's just giving you material. It's called Space Balls 2 to search for more money. You call it that. You have to call it that. Space Balls 2 to search for more money. I think it is, it'd be hard to do it without John Candy. And who else? Somebody else from passed away. Oh, yeah. Joan Rivers. She passed away. Ooh, that? I don't care about UFC. Mm. Old Bon Elliot. Oh, Bane. Hey, yeah, Michael Weatherly returned too. Apparently, there's a rumor they're going to put a performance center in Las Vegas. Dude, I didn't know. You know what? In the scene where the two guys are literally combing the desert. Yeah. One of them's Rob Paulson. The voice of the like the voice actor for Rob Paulson, that's yeah. he's one of them. Oh yeah, the, the, the other guy, the one that says we need oh, fast. Yeah. That's um look, look. Hey, look Ben Kingsley's in it too. Yeah, I love that part. Have you had your eyes shit? It does look fun. Oh, back to this again. Cody, we've been out here since July, and we still ain't seen nothing. You gotta know what you you're, gotta know what you're looking at. Uh, my favorite line from this is the first one where he's like, Don't you own a tour bus? Don't you own a tour bus? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, apparently, the it was going to be on the anniversary of Hell in a Cell. That's brought to you by Wendy's and Morgan and Morgan. Burgers and lawyers. Both of you want, want to get fat in their own way. I heard Wendy's isn't doing too good. Like, a month they had to close down a bunch of locations. Like, they, had, they closed down they, the across from my yeah, job. Yeah, they also got flack for trying to do this, like, like on the fly. Was it, like, on the fly price hike? <laughs> Where they would update price the prices on the fly. But you know they're not doing as bad as Red Lobster. Yeah, this is also crazy too. Look at this. I know, look at this. Bay Metal and Elect and, and Electric Cowboy. So I don't the last time Japan Germany collaborated didn't turn out so well. I need to point that out. And now they're collaborating for a metal song. Baby metal's awesome. I'm glad I got to see them live. Ratata. Ratatata. I like how the haters always try to shit on Bay Metals and then all the metal artists come out and say shit the fuck up. Uh, this is probably the attendance announcement. You know what's the most bullshit number now is when they combine the WrestleMania attendance numbers together. I'm like, you do realize like over 90% of those people bought for both nights, right? <laughs> like, what do you say? I don't know. I don't speak German. Do you tell me, German boy? That's the screen. Highest show in WWE history. Wow. Highest grossing. Made biggest ticket sales. Yeah, but is that just for inflation? You gotta count that. That's why I say it's the highest grossing movie of all time. Uh, just for inflation. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's uh, Trevor Twins versus Judgment Club. So we're calling it from now on. It's Judgment Club. Eh. 
Like adjusted for inflation, the highest rated, the highest grossing movie of all time is still Gone with the Wind. Yeah, I know. I heard about that recently. Oh, Boo. 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 It should have been me. Boo. Yeah, I got the Yu-Gi-Oh one. This shit not me, not him. Dude, look what this match is sponsored by. <laughs> God, that shitty looking game. I've heard it's actually good. I've it heard looks it's actually pretty terrible. Good. I've heard it's actually pretty good. You know, you can't, if you don't do any of the side quests, if you can beat it in like 15 hours. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is why I love while watching the Peacock replay. We don't have to watch any of that additional crap. Get right to the point. Yeah. Where are you? We got this match. And then the main event. Is that it? Yep. That's it. We're down to the last two matches, dude. It's the penultimate one. I don't know. I still feel like five matches. Like six, I would do six matches. Yeah, seriously, their new logo literally looks like it's more of a club, motorcycle club. So me calling them Judgment Club is fully justified. Yeah, they're not doing the Reaper entrance anymore. Ah, but they still have the uh, Ultra Bridge song, which is good. Yeah, they have more recycle clubs. Like, now they think they're fucking aces and eights. I see. Now I know that reference now. Aces and eights wasn't as bad as people said it was. Like it was. Even though I saw Bully Ray turning heel coming from a mile away, they acted like that was a shocking thing. It was obvious me Bully Ray was tricking Hogan. Are you really supposed to believe that the group being led by Devon wasn't se in the half secret leader? And it wasn't Bully Ray. Bullshit. I also, okay, this is another thing I got from that, the new OSW review, is, um, what was it? The, um, why, uh, Eric Young and ODB were, uh, TNA Knockouts Tag Top Champions for so long. They held for 478 days. <laughs> why they're so long? It's because, oh yeah, that's right, Eric Young's not a woman. I know it's like, oh, we are shipping you the title because you're not a woman. He's held for 478 days. <laughs> he is one of the longest reigning TA knockouts tag champions in history. And then they retired the belt. I do love that when he's like, okay, that's fair. Here, here, they come back. <laughs> like, like he's held for a year and a half. What the, he's been a man that whole time, you know? Uh, thankfully, they brought that belt back and it's been booked a lot better. Well, <sighs> there's no guarantee Damien would have beaten Gunther without Balor. Hey, but you know why I like? Damien Priest is nicely over right now. A nice amount over right now. Like That's that why I love. It looked like he had the wings. Here comes Goth Mommy. Did you see this theme song? What? I don't remember the lyrics. Did you see the lyrics? No, it's the same. Yes, don't call them Terror Twins. You know what I think of when I think of Terror Twins? I hear Terror Twins. It's going to be really dark. I think the Twin Towers. Mm -hmm. The Terror Twins. Like, I, don't need to, I don't want to think about 9-11. Like, like Dude, they did the probably what's going to be most viewed WWE video in history. They had a video about Rhea's tattoos. All of them. All of them. And she she's wearing like she's wearing like exercise like outfit an exercise outfit that has her logo on on the chest part, 
Like, I like even feeling like like this is gonna awaken things in people. <laughs> do, you, do they do like close ups of them? Yeah, they sh yeah. She's it's just video about her talking about all her tattoos and stuff. Oh, that's a great placement of that. That sign. That's a pretty dope sign. I missed it. It's just it's one guy. Look in the back. You see it? It's look there it is. Oh uh, yeah. I was distracted by a Dominic skeleton shirt. Yeah, that's what people. I love people online saying about that video. It's like that's gonna awaken some things in people. Yeah, yeah. Rio's already awoken a lot of things in people. You notice they didn't call him the Terror Twins, dude. He literally has it on his pants. I know, but they didn't call him that. That's what they call themselves. It's stupid, dude. I call. The team of Randy Orton and Kevin Owens team are KO. Like but that, but that's clear. They're not called that. They have a shirt, yeah, but they're not calling them Team R KO. It's still. It was funny too. I mean, I, I, you saw my friend Jermaine react to the Dirt Nintendo Direct because you saw there was Sea of Stars DLC. He went, Oh, that's right. I still have Xbox Game Pass. It's on Game Pass. <laughs> it's my worst place yesterday. He was already like half, like roughly like a halfway through the game already. <laughs> and they're like, God damn. You know, I have not asked you this entire pick up pay per view. Oh, that's right. right. You said you guys don't do the um, your game for oh, you only do it for the big four, right? For what? Your 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 game to your friends. We had the oh my for my predictions. Yeah, yeah. Only do I, I I've only convinced them to be able to do big four WWE and then all AW pay per view. Yeah, but looks like AEW is increasing their number of pay per views. Doesn't matter. They'll still, dude. They're more. They're the, the Discord. My Discord buddies lean more towards AEW stuff, WWE stuff. Some of them will still watch WWE stuff and still participate in WWE Big Four predictions. But like, how'd you do for All In? Right now, remember it's a two parter. So All In um, it was the first part of it. All Out is the next part of it. Right now, I'm currently in third for sta in standings. Third out of um, what? Um, uh, third, well, third place, like right now in the standings. Yeah, but how many people are running are in it? Like two above me. Um, See, hold on, out, a I have the numbers the here. People, are you, are you third out of what? Give me a sec. <laughs> like three, six. There's eight people can be. In. I'm third out of eight people. And I um. Oh no! Can get nowhere. Yeah, and like I'm only four points behind the leader. So, but so far the matches for all out sound great. You know, uh, what was it? Pac Osprey, which should be a banger. Um, Steel Cage, we actually Hangman and Swerve, Jack Perry, and Nielsen, Dan, Jack Nielsen. Perry. I look. I'm not. I'm serious. I'm like, come on, guys. Look, my the first is... world title, AW World Title match in two fucking years. And it's Perry Danielson, a guy who let's not forget, Ori has a singles championship. And he has a TNT title. Yeah, like with Pac Osprey, that's fine because that's the trios title Pac has. Yeah. And my thing is, like, I don't mind seeing Jack Perry and Daniel Bryan wrestle. Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, form Jr. Um, it's just it does it's not believable for the world title. Like I don't believe for a second Jack Perry has a chance of winning. Like Darby Allen has a bigger chance of winning at at uh Grand Slam. I don't know what they're chanting. It sounds like all elite wrestling, but that's only because we're talking AEW right now. <laughs> it's always hot something wrestler. Maybe she's a bad wrestler or he's a bad wrestler. I don't know. So, um, you let Dominic Mysterio steal the Parker's outfit. Hmm? He's still the Parker's outfit. Oh, the top half, at least. Top half. 
Okay, I organized that chant. <laughs> Ari is loving it too. It's weird that all Dom had to do to be a better wrestler was grow hair out like a mullet and grow the ugliest looking mustache. Oh, the ugliest looking mustache ever. Yeah. Like the only reason mine's not great right now is I haven't tr I haven't groomed it in a while. But like mine, geez, looks better. It looks like some a rat got on his lip and died. It looks like a small rat died on the top of his lip. <laughs> That's why I, I love how I grew out this. That's why I love how I grew out all of this. Because, yeah. like, it was just this. It used to be just this. And then it just wasn't working. But then I started doing this again. For some reason, my mustache hair is lighter than my beard hair. So it's hard, always hard to see it. So, even if I yeah, do, it looks like you have peach fuzz. Well, right now I have peach fuzz. I'm not growing up. It's not really growing out right now, but when I do try to grow it out, it's harder to see because it's blonder than my beard. Yeah, no, yeah, it's because I have my hair is a mix of blonde and brown. Mm. Mine's black and gray. No, they are chain fuck you, Dom. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> gotta love watching this on pay per view. <laughs> Oh, wow, Michael Cole. Do you have something against the ref? That's well, how your champ, he was doing his fucking job, Cole. Get off his ass. He's trying his best. He's trying his best, Cole. Get off him. Fuck. Oh, at one point I thought she was going to do Tyler Bates bopping bang. <laughs> you know? He's a conniver. He's a conniver. She loves the rock. Yes, yeah, stick it right up Dom's ass. Oh no, damn! You wanted to pull a Hancock? I'm gonna take. If you want more, I'm gonna take your head and show it up his ass. <laughs> yeah, I actually like that movie. That was, you know what? That was an underrated film. Oh, that was clever. That was clever. I would like to see. It. What was that? I would like to see a sequel. Dude, I would love to have seen a sequel, man. Because they were going to like their backstory, like their immortals. I, and I and I love what they do with it. It's like, unfortunately, whoever created them, the closer they get to each other, the weaker they become. Yeah. Which is such a ridiculous, it's such an interesting thing, but they never tackle it. I want at least one more movie to explain their back origin stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Will Smith's in a weird place right now. Like he was persona non grata, but then the last bad boys did really good. I just if Will Smith had just gave a proper apology to Chris Rock, this could have gone away. But he gave that half-assed apology. And 
I think Chris Rock got a special out of it. <laughs> I remember Dave Chappelle brought it up too in his uh his special about him messaging Chris Rock after it happened. Yeah. It's really funny. That's real. Huh? I mean, people are like, is that real? Ooh! Holy shit! What that was, was that? Nice. I don't know, but it was nice. Hell yeah. You try to say Liv Morgan can't wrestle. Liv Morgan can wrestle. I never said that. No, I'm just saying some people. Oh, okay. Woo. Like a it was like a modified crucifix bomb, kind of. You got a guy that mustache looks fake. I thought I didn't go up there and rip it off. He needs to do that. He needs to shave it, put on a fake Zach duplicate one, and then, then like, then like, then he's like, look, it's not even real. <laughs> Oh, take the nice. face. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. 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 You're talking about ramen. You know, I forgot to mention to you cup noodles. Because they've been doing like very extremely unique flavors. Because uh-huh. I have two of them, which is everything bagel flavor ramen. Bagel. Every everything bagel flavor ramen, and uh, breakfast style ramen. Mm. Yeah, it's not as close as you think. No, I haven't I'm... had any of them, and they just came out. And I'm not kidding with s'mores flavored ramen, cup noodle ramen. Yeah, serious. It's available. Oh, I could get it right gross. now if I felt what? That sounds gross. It does. I think the only one that may taste decent is the everything bagel one. Yeah. Oh, cool. Double crucifix bomb. Oh, double sorry, double razor's edge. My bad. Finish him. You know, uh, I found here, out about here, that. Yeah, here comes Finn Bauer. There's JD. Carlito. Oh! oh. You know what? I'll give. I'll give. Um. I'll give. Oh! Oh! oh cool. He's in a corner. Oh! Look out, priest. Oh. There's Bauer. Sling Blade. Oh, no. You do a 619. Oh, boo. They need backup, man. They seriously need fucking backup. No. (laughs) The face of him, Bauer. That's that goblin snarl. Okay, this match has been a lot more entertaining than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> that sunset flip into the barricade. Ow. That was good. That was really good. Oh, oh. Ooh, she nearly overshot that. Yeah. She nearly overshot that. Oh! Don't get distracted by Jake. No, don't distract. Like, oh, come on! Yeah, it looked like it was Oblivion, but instead she went for more of a code breaker. So, Uh, I love that. I love JD just getting pounced into the ba- into the commentary section. I kind of saw JD jump into it. I kind of just see that. I love that. Uh-oh. Oh, come on, guys. Seriously? I know who I went with 
uh, in this match, but seriously, come on, guys. <laughs> they need backup. That's the problem. That's what I'm thinking. They may get backup. That's why I gave that, that uh, Becky Seth theory. I mean, about backup. They just had the LWO already confronted them recently. Uh oh. Aren't are they legal people? Who's legal right now? Um, all of them, but also Liv and Rhea. Riptide, get warrants. Do it, yeah, girl. Oh, yeah, you're getting rematched bad blood. Yeah, and guess what? It warrants getting Rhea another t opportunity at the World Heavyweight title. Women's World Heavyweight title. Oh, look at that. They're taking a lovely photo together, Nick. I went with... I thought I went with uh, Rhea and uh, Damian winning, but I thought Damian would pin uh, Dominic. But I still got it right. You know, I should have figured, considering how off offensive the uh, offensive judgment club were this entire time before this match, that, oh yeah, oh yeah, Terra Twins are going to win. <laughs> Still got a damn cough. Hmm. Let's take a prayer to get rid of this cough. Uh, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm stuck there for a sec. One more match left, Nick. We are on the main event of the evening. <laughs> uh, it sucks I was wrong about my Roman prediction, though. Yeah, that was one of the more brutal spots. The uh, sunset flip into the barricade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to miss some clever offerings from Liv overall. Yeah, overall, this was a fun, This was a lot more of an entertaining match than I thought it was going to be, you know? Is somebody in a? I think somebody in the crowd shares is Orange Cassidy. Oh, you may not have heard this M MLW at the last show. Yeah, uh, Contra Unit, which Minoru Suzuki recently joined, him and Iru Kwan defeated Kojima and uh, Okamura for the MLW Tag Team Titles. Oh, neat. So Minoru, so Minoru Suzuki is half one half of the MLW Tag Champs now. I like how Luch Pants laying their stars are not easy to use. They just go around and do a bunch of things. That's pretty dope. Like, that's why we get, we're getting Ishii more often on AEW right now. Suzuki's yeah, so been like MLW advances. Like, he joined Contra Unit in MLW. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Oh. Well, tonight's also um, the NWA 76th anniversary show. Yay. Which, um, they've been, instead of doing pay per views, they've been doing like big tapings. Like, so they'll take, they'll call it like one of their pay per view names, but then split it up into different episodes. I've heard AEW been a bit lack lackadaisical on their recent merch. I haven't seen a lot of it, so I can't really say for sure. I have one thing came out there to be. Then come out. They come out with good merch. So I'm bet, taking bets. Will Julia finally show up at No Mercy? Probably so, because she just had her final match in Japan. Because <laughs> this is because they, they've had to stretch out uh, Roxanne Perez's reign a bit longer than expected. 
Roxanne. I don't mind. Uh, I think Roxanne Perez is great, and her heel persona has been doing wonders. Yeah, I think she's being Jada Parker in No Mercy. I don't. I think she's she's gonna lose to either Julia or Stephanie Vakir, one of them. Halfway across the country, Rocky Mountain, final high school of Denver, NXT, 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 Denver, not only for NXT, no mercy, but Monday Night Wade Barrett, Joe Pestator, debut on Monday Night Raw. Yep. Uh, and what a night we got. Oh, that, look at that match. Ooh. Oh, man, poor Kaiser. He's in between Sheamus and Bronson and Reed. I want to see, honestly, I would love to see Sheamus Breaker. Yeah. I don't see Breaker. Whoever wins the tournament isn't being Breaker. I think no, 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 definitely not. Breaker's gonna hold it at least ma- till I think till Mania. And but look at the other match though. I know. Poor they Dragon Dom- Lee, man. Get Dominic out of there. Dragon Lee got thrown to the LWO. I just, I just want Jey Uso to be done with the gimmick and go back to uh, Sheamus winning one and. Dragon off winning the fourth. I can see it being Dragon off and Sheamus in the other two spots. Yeah, I can see great. But, but you need, to, but you need to. Oh, bash facts, fucking bash facts. But yeah, I can see Dom making it to to fatal four, fatal four way, but then like re like Rhea or Priest uh, prevent him from getting it. Who wins overall? Yeah, I At some point, Jey Uso losing another title match. You got to give Jey Uso something eventually. He's, he's getting to the LA Knight territory where you're pushing him and you got to give him something. No, you know what you give him? A ticket back to fucking Jimmy Uso. I'm tired. I'm done. Stop. I'm, I'm Enough's enough. You don't like Jey Uso? I like Jey Uso, but now it's gotten to a point where I'm just tired of his gimmick. It just it annoys me now. I hate it. It's yeah. bad. And he's not even using it right. That's not what the word yeet means. I know yeet means to throw something really hard. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. It's not, it's just that. Honestly, it really is. Hey. Oh, you're using AK camera for his entrance. You can tell. That's, a cool That's look. nice. Cool work. Yeah, Orange still has one of the best themes ever. It astounded him when the crowd did that first time. He's like, never. How did it go? Never in the history of my entire career did I have a, a crowd sing my entrance theme. <laughs> Look at that. It's getting loud. That's all as France where they got a noise complaint. All right, keep her down there. I'm trying to get ready for NWA 76. <laughs> Look at those accolades. Yeah, he's, yeah, first ballot Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, him, Cena, like, easily. People used to hate Arnold Orton. I've always loved Orton. I've never hated Orton. And I think I agree with what he has said in recent interviews post Vince. It's just he wanted to do so much differently as he got older in his older in his career, long, much l- later in his career. But it was Vince, and Vince wanted to book Randy Orton like Vince, like Vince always books Randy Orton. Well, like while well, Vince wanted to book him as like vintage Randy Orton, Randy wanted to be like the veteran going against the younger guys, but Vince won't let him. So he's like, that's why he, like in a recent interview, he's like, "Well, I appreciate, like, well, I appreciate what Vince did for me." 
like I also appreciate the fact that he's gone because I get to do what I've been wanting to do for a while now. And that's where I'm like, right there. Also, the fact that his wife's Puerto Rican, that there is what like some of me like, okay, Randy, Randy's uh, Randy's cool. His wife's Puerto Rican. Yeah, his wife. I found this <laughs> out. It was like he did his interview for at, on Renee Paquette's podcast and he brings up his Puerto Rican wife and her family's there. I'm like, wait, wait, he married to his Hispanic family? Okay. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> hey, hey, I get to say that. I mean, Dustin like, Rhodes already did it. So I got Cody. Cody's half Hispanic. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you don't forget, Cody's half Cuban. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a weird fact. Yeah, and I look at my brother, who's who looks like a white guy, but he's actually half Hispanic. Go. Well, it's not completely unbelievable. <laughs> uh, okay, I remember when AEW was like doing, uh, I don't know if it was Cinco de Mayo or something, and they're showing all their Hispanic people on the roster. And it shows Cody. And he's like, what's Cody doing there? It's like, hey, he's half Cuban. And you see his mom. <laughs> he's got that Hispanic, uh, she's got a Latina fire. I did that pose once when they had the championship up in Lake Eola. It, it, I did it because I had to do it like that. Look at, I call it the look at my tan pose. Look at my tan pose. No what do you think? Before Randy, Randy's career is over, do you think he should tie for the most world titles in WWE? I think he should break it. He should break it. Oh, interesting. 17. Like, no offense to Cena, but if anyone should break Ric Flair's record, it should be Ric Flair's protege. Politicians all are liars. <laughs> oh, that line. I see, I see my mom is cooking. <laughs> Wait for it. This song just freaking. I don't care what Randy says. I also love his previous theme too. Burning my light. Burning my light's okay. Hey, nothing you can say. Nothing's gonna change what you've done oh. to me. Now it's time to shine. I'm gonna take what's mine. Take what's mine. Dude, I had that on one of my old uh playlists. What's funny that is that song. song is a direct reference to the to when evolution turned on him. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Hometown boy getting that pop. It's not technically I mean he's from Austria, man. <laughs> oh come on, you could have let him come out to his original theme. That's what I like about Tony Khan once in a while. He'll let um He'll let uh, was it? He'll let Brian come out to final countdown. I think Brian's want to spend the money. Well, so he's wanting to spend his dad's money. Let's let's be honest. Like Tony Khan's a billionaire. He's like, no, his dad's a billionaire. Championship <laughs> bitch. So far, he hasn't six six six. That's such a great way to end your title reign at six six six. That's so weird. It, He's only two days away from making a month with the title. Hell of a first defense. It's weird that this is his first. Is it his first defense? Yeah. Fuck. I mean, okay. first televised defense. I can figure out why uh, Jade and Bianca are wearing all green. So after Orton, who's he got? The, I guess he could face Jey Uso. There's uh, still a bunch of people they can lamb up with. There's time for that. Yeah. How long do you think he holds it for, though? Oh, he's gonna hold it for a while. If I I say latest he loses it is Mania. To Cena. Cena? I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Cause you. That's how you like. Is Cena that 17th world title? Yeah. And guess how you end his uh how you end do John Cena's final match? Whoever you're gonna give the world heavyweight title to. 
That's it. That's how you do it. Would you be okay though with Gunther losing to a part timer? No, no, no. If this is not one of those like roll my eyes Roman Reigns kind of thing, or like Goldberg, or like Goldberg, you know, like for one thing, Walter, if he makes it, knock on wood, hopefully to next WrestleMania, yeah, he'll have what a like was it August. September, October, November, December, January, February, March. He'll have a nine month reign with the title, which is a good one. And I guess losing the same is not the same as losing the Goldberg. Oh, this is cool. Kaiser's going to do uh, Walter's intro. Ladies and gentlemen. It's not the Imperium's down to two people. He's doing in German. Dude, did you watch his match into LA Knight and SmackDown? Jesus Christ, Michael Cole gave me the history of, of uh, Axel Dieter. <laughs> They're saying it. Dude, to not only wrestle in a main event of WWE pay per view, but to do so as champion in your homeland, like how far he's come. There's like a lot of Austrians right now are saying we're not Germany, Kristen. Look, I was raised to learn about Germany one way. You're par- more than likely right. Let me have this. <laughs> I'm not the smartest when it comes to geography or geology. I mean, there have been many times where Germany did rule Austria. <laughs> so, so, like, I apologize so, to any evil mustache man. Austrian or German watchers. I'm sorry. I do not mean to make you know, any offense. That to be fair, I'm sure the Austrians are much more happy to be associated with Gunther than um, e- uh, evil mustache man. Evil mustache man. Well, yeah, we're not, we'll, we won't talk about him. <laughs> No, I see like there's some history channels who can't even say the name that because they'll get demonetized. So they have to call like evil mustache man. Uh. I'm like, it's a history channel, YouTube. They're not fucking they're not freaking promoting the Nazis. Like they don't even they can't say Nazi, they didn't say the bad guys in World War II. Okay, regardless. Regardless, I'm happy for them. Evil mustache. The man, the, you know who I meant. <laughs> For Walter, I'm happy that like he stuck with it, and look where he, he stuck with it in WWE, and look where he is now. Yeah. Like remember, he got borderline close to being canned oh, because what of an R Truth segment. What was that statistic? Like he's been champion like eighty percent of his time in WWE. Like saying, like I think seventy five or eighty percent of the time he's been in WWE, he's been a he's been at, has held some champion. form of a championship. He held the UK title forever. He held the Intercontinental title forever, and he's world heavyweight champion. Like I said, I get minimum nine month frame. He loses to Cena Mania. Minimum nine you month frame. The Rumble or something or. or the, or does the win the rumble winner go for the WWE title? Well, he doesn't. Like, that's the thing. It doesn't mean Cena has to win the Royal Rumble. We don't want that. Um, I mean, he'd be he tied with Austin for winning it three times. Yeah, like he can be in it. When was the last time Cena was actually in a Royal Rumble? Have to check. Are you gonna check, Patrick? You want me to do it now? You can if you want. This match only just started. All right. John Cena. John Cena. Oh, I keep saying, like, on, oh, uh, they keep showing old Santino things. Like, and John Cena always broke every time Santino called him John Cena. Oh, yeah. Beth Phoenix brought that up, too. Like, there was a couple of times when they were doing their, like, couples angle where, she, where like, Santino would completely catch her off guard and nearly made her corpse like, a few times. Like Santino's corpse with people before, I'm sure. He's good at that. He's good at the humor. That's why I'm so happy, like, 
he's doing what he's doing right now in TNA as the uh, what was it? The director of operations. Yeah, basically he's general manager. Yeah. I like what they're doing there. And plus, part of me can't wait to see him just show up again in NXT. Like, just to see him reunite with his uh, daughter. Because remember, they're doing the TNA crossover thing. You can't, and he's still under Santino Morella. So, like, you can have him show up to, like, say hi to his daughter on, on in kayfabe. Yeah, I'm glad he got the, some of the, I, I like some of these wrestlers from, like, the uh, Ruthless Aggression era are getting the rights to their names. Like, they're just not holding on to them. Sorry, I'm not hearing you. Crowd's doing something. This is why I love about like countries where like their most one of their most dominant professional sports they love watching is is football. You know, is because like they just know how to do the fucking chants, like they just know it, and they're rhythmic and they're amazing at it. Fucking hell. They haven't done shit, and they're chanting "This is awesome" already. Like, I love this. I love this crowd. This crowd's great. So I think it looks like the last Royal Rumble scene was it was twenty eighteen. See, look at that. It's been it, it's been like near. It's been like over six years. It was supposed to be in twenty nineteen, but he was taken out there to a storyline injury. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, I'm going by Wikipedia. So the last time it's mentioned he was in the Royal Rumble was 2018. Oh, well, my point still stands. He hasn't been in the Rumble for a while. I can see him being in it, but I can see him fall fall short, honestly. And that's fine. Oh my god, they're doing the wave! They're doing the wave. They did the wave. They're doing the wave, Nick. Oh, is that kind of disrespectful? Uh, is that insulting? I feel like that's not insulting. Is that insulting? Know. It's kind of disrespectful because you're not paying attention to the match. It's like when people throw the beach ball. Oh, I like what says what is it Claudio did that one time. This is our way. He just found it, grabbed it, went. It's a heel move. Oh, I think like boo. I feel like he was genuinely pissed. That's why he destroyed it. I think I think they're fine. I think the crowd's just having fun. I mean, I would do that too if I wanted to stay awake. Remember what they chanted during the Revolution main event we were at? Let's go, Adam. Adam sucks. Let's fun. go. Still fun. great. <laughs> Let's go. And I love Hangman saying they're cheering for me. Yeah, because Randy's having fun. Like, this is what Randy's been wanting to do for years now. Just, you know, the up, not the, you know, not only wrestling up and comers, but wrestling the guys who deserve to get that push. Get that rocket strapped to the moon, you know. Right, this is Randy Orton's 189th pay-per-view match. Really? Yeah, he holds the record for most pay-per-view matches ever. So if he shows up at Bad Blood, that's 190, right? Yeah. Dude, by the you know if he does it right by the end of next year, he'll reach 200. The previous record holder was Kane at 176. Randy Orton surpassed that a while ago. I don't know if the crowd's into this match, or doesn't care for this match, or just loves this match, or loves both these guys, but I'm just loving their enthusiasm right now. If Cena does wrestle all 12 pay-per-views next year, then now I'll move him up on the pay-per-view list. Because right now he's 165, so he's number five. Mm. He wrestles 12, up over 72. 75. Well, I just realized, too, he's Little Nate is, is uh, refing this match. Well, of course, he's the best referee that, in, that, that we have right now. That dude honestly deserves that uh, to be in the Hall of Fame. Honestly, yeah. you're gonna use the Warrior Award for how it's supposed to. 
I kind of wish so before they started doing that, just actually called the Jimmy Miranda Award, which was Warrior wanted, and just start you got and just do away with the Warrior Award. Yeah, but at least they're doing what Warrior wanted with it originally, which was like two the guys in the back it's who still, like you can see, who you can help see, like, out. The Warrior Award has like a two part history. The first part was when it was used just for charity, for lack of a better word, propaganda. And then you have what it's actually supposed to be meant for. Yeah. Warrior's original vision for the the, the damn thing. And yeah, I think Charles, I think Lil Nate deserves it, honestly. Like, not only just for how long he's been in the pro wrestling business, but how dedicated he is uh, to helping out, you know. And he's easily one of my favorite refs of all time. I mean, Earl, like, Hebner, Earl Hebner should be in the Hall of Fame, too. But yeah. I don't know if he's still on baby's shit list. Well, I don't know. Is he selling, um, counterfeit Hall of Fame rings in the back of his van? It's not a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stupid thing to do. Why would you do that? You're going to get caught. No, I love a little Nate in the <laughs> ring. He's so expressive. He doesn't need to be, but he's so expressive. He's like, he's spin. in the match. Literally <laughs> and figuratively. But the re- referees mattered. Name playing. Dude, I look I'm looking at Walter's gear and all I'm thinking about is is Brian Danielson's gear. The color of his gear. They match. Ooh, he almost said it, Nick. He said the old Randy Orton. He didn't say your favorite your favorite thing. Uh, oh, excuse me again. Jeez. Do I know that's the top 10 most pay per view matches in WWE history? You can go ahead while I watch this match. Tied for number 10, Rey Mysterio and Kofi Kingston, 123. Mm-hmm. Number 9, The Miz, 135. Yeah. 8, Big Show, 142. Number 7, Jericho, 144. Number 6, Edge, 145. Number 5, John Cena, 165. Number four, Triple H, 173. Ooh. Number three, The Undertaker, 174. Number two, Kane, 176. And Randy Orton, 189. Number one. Dude, one more. He's at 190. Jeez. So Ray and Kingston keep going back and forth because they don't get booked the same. Some people get banged on papers. Do you, let me ask you. Do you think Xavier Woods is going to turn heel? He probably is. The, the yeah. new, had, I think it's time for the new day to end. Dude, they're about to reach 10 years. I mean, Biggie's not probably not coming back anytime soon. You, you know when you do it? Do it Celebration Kevin Owens style, though. But you know when you do it? 10-year celebration. Oh, uh, yeah. That's when you do it. Yeah, he seems to be upset that um, Kingston's friends with... um. What's yeah, name? he's... Yeah, he. it's more than that. But, yeah, he's... No, he's, he's like... Like why I just bring in we don't need to praise Big E, but at the same time I, you know Kofi you know he agrees with Kofi like okay he's just friends stuff like that but he's tr- but the problem Xavier's having is, is he's treating Odyssey like he's the newest member of the New Day which is bugging the shit out of Xavier. I mean if they want if he did want to add a new member to New Day why can't he? I think that's where. As much as I would love to say this in the way I want it to be said, this is where you have Big E show up to try to work, work things out between the two. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was a good entrance theme too, was Big E singles theme. That was a good one too. Oh, yeah. But it goes back to my point about the only three. Yeah. That was such a good game, early game for Big E. He's like, no, nah, no. Nah. You get, give me five for a pinfall. I need the challenge. Yeah. Mm. 
I speak no German, so I'm assuming they're going for somebody. Oh, yeah, he's trying to use the bad arm to close the line or and it's not as effective. He was trying to go for Vintage Orton. Remember that when that was uh, Neville's finisher when he turned heel? It was like a delayed uh, superplex. Mm -hmm. The most like anti cruiserweight move. You know, he's calling himself the king of the cruiserweights. <laughs> that was actually the start of the bastard character. Yeah, that was good. Because before he was like, dude, he teaches Neville. And I was like, no, this is, this is the real pop. At the Uber Arena in Berlin, Germany. Gunther, the champion, the challenger. In what has been one of the most physical matchups you've witnessed. Ah, damn. 
Jumper, the jumper in the process for Silvery. Oh, and there's a lot. There's no there's fight. No fight. It's a jump. Packed it up for Gut. They jumped it with a chop. Right there, see? Flying through the play. Lowry has a good The goal is on the line. The last of that is tapped out if the goal wasn't present. Let's go for that. Now, Gunther. Gunther. Good Gunther. Be the better. Oh! He, he missed it. Nick did. He did vintage MJF. He poked him in the eye. Yeah. He MJF. poked him in the eye. Well, give me Rick Flair. Well, referee Charles Robinson letting a lot go in this matchup. We saw that earlier. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, 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 Nick, hello. Oh, he missed it. He did vintage. I he said the thing. It. He said the thing. The thing my you love so much. My dog split up some phlegm. Oh, sorry on, to hear that. On, on the carpet. Move. I mean, I wiped it up quick, but I, I still need to. I do really need to get cleaned up. Okay. I will run and get the spray. I'll be right back. Oh, you're watching. You're gonna leave, and John Cena shows up. <laughs> He's going to that special place where all the gumdrops and the fairies and the never-ending river of licorice are. Oh, also the, uh, where RKOs exist. Like, very deadly, very deadly place to be. Fine. Doom. It will spell doom for you. I sacrifice. I can only be entertained as much as possible while I'm solo on this. So forgive me. Oh, there goes Zorin for RKO. Does miss it? Okay, Star's back. Oh, who? Oh, wait. Moe's not here. No, no Moe's a supernova. Is a technician. You're a white dwarf. That's why I'm wearing a brown dwarf. Dad. No. I know what I heard. The, oop, oop. I was like, no. I was like, no, the carpet. Oh yeah, when Angel starts dry heaving on the ki on the bed, I don't care. I grab that dog and like just I don't chuck um, her. I just grab her and just like flop her on the floor. Going okay, now do it. <laughs> oh, I just try to I run her to the front door and try to get her to the ground. You know what you did. You know what you did. Man, eh? Look at me. <laughs> she doesn't give a fuck about you. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. No, she knows she's in trouble. Yeah, my center now. No, not his arm. Not the arm. Anything but the arm. He needs that to hold things and hit things really hard. And power bomb stupid people. Did you call Orton stupid? No, I just said power bomb people in general. I wasn't counting Orton. You said stupid people. Was the county or in? Stupid, stupid. 
Speaking of which, I'm loving the running joke of Tommaso Ciampa trying to RKO Orton and always failing. Mm. And then they brought back uh, Bobby Roode for that one video. They brought back the glorious video joke. I hate Bobby Roode retired about winning a World Time to be. He got a U.S. title run and tag title runs. Mm-hmm. His 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 best roles in TNA. Yeah. Did that previous longest reign TNA World Title run for Josh Alexander mm-hmm. broke the record. Mm-hmm. One, two, kick out. Oh, I love that guy. You saw that guy in the crowd. He went like this. Like, Got the RKO. Kick out. Come here. Kick out the RKO. Come here. Come here. Nice. Ooh. By the way, people, look at my desk. Nice. Okay, focus, Nick. Focus. I am focusing. You're the one not focusing. Dude, yeah, he just went for our RKO and then one of the rare kickouts from said RKO. I know, I'm watching. I got it on the other screen. <sighs> Got away. I need to away and he'll lay down. This commentary table looks comfortable enough. <laughs> Come here. What flavor is the WWE flavor for Prime? Is it like cherry? It's red, so actually it looks kinda of like a new that looks like a new bottle. No, no, that's you no. Know, it's a new WWE branded Prime. I was wondering what flavor it is. You gotta wonder what. You gotta wonder what Randy has in, Randy has in mind here. Gunther is Gunther really, is really hurt. hurt. He still hasn't recovered from the RKO. I bet it tastes really good in the beginning. Barely disappointing in the middle, and then it's kind of okay at the end. Yeah, because they uh, eventually fired a guy who originally made it this stuff. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't turn around. Ooh. Hey, I told you not to turn around. Did you know somebody three years ago made a musical based on the Homer's The Odyssey? No. Yeah, look up Epic. It was Epic the Musical. Because uh, I was on an Uber drive over to my brother's job yesterday. The la- one of the couple of tracks a lady in the Uber driver car a vehicle was listening to was from that soundtrack. And holy crap, it's actually, I mean, it's 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 what you expect from like a musical, but it's pretty good. Like I said, it's called like Epic the Musical. You know, my it's like favorite... Homer's The Odyssey. It's a you know, musical my... version of Homer's The Odyssey. You know what my favorite version of The Odyssey is? What? Oh, brother, where art thou? You know what? Somebody told me that, and like I'm like, okay, that's clever. 
it's literally is the Odyssey. You just you put to, compared both together. Like John Goodman's the Cyclops. That's why he has an eye patch. Oh. And then you have the Sirens who, who knocked them out and kidnapped them. He kidnapped one of them. Okay, so okay, so let me ask then. What's their version of the arrow through the axe handles? Arrow through the what? The axe handles. Remember, they do a test to see who whoever nails this trick that only Odysseus could uh, do becomes the new like head of his kingdom or something like that. And so they disguise him as the old. That's in. Yeah, it's in the Odyssey. I know, I know it's the Odyssey. I'm trying to remember what part of the Odyssey is. Like, it's the end. It's literally the end. They have him disguised probably... as an old man. Oh, to do yeah, it. No, I know, I know. It's it's at the end when they're disguised as the soggy bottom boys and they're doing that and they're doing the musical and the uh, police and uh, that racist guy running for governor tries to hmm. stop them. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah, so they, they, they said this guy's old men, this guy's the soggy bottom boys. Ah, so that's how they do it instead. That's clever. Yeah. Yeah, the movie's just the Odyssey. No, I got no, I got that. That's uh-huh. why I was curious about how they did the, the final act. And the and the share and the officers out there was literally the devil. <laughs> and anytime you see like his glasses, it reflects fire. Yeah, like the the two things I learned most is people tell me it's a southern take on the Homer's the Odyssey yeah. and the song and the main song that came from that movie. Yeah, and man, love something and sorrow. I forgot how the lyrics went. Come down my way. Yeah, it is. I think it's my favorite George Clooney movie. He's really good at that. Like George Clooney, Tim Blake Nelson, and what's the name? I know his name. John Turtaro or something like that. He thought he was a toad. Dude, to be fair, it took him it took a lot out of him, Michael called, to uh put him through a commentary table. Look at my tan. It's a nice tan. It's like a move. It's like a pose a bodybuilder in a weightlifting competition does. <laughs> Lil H? Yeah, he's awesome like that. <laughs> This is already better than their, than their King of the Ring match. Oh yeah, definitely. Because Lil Nate Slim get away with a lot of shit. <sighs> I still think WrestleMania should be Cody versus Randy. Mm. You'll take Cody rocking. You'll shut up. Now the guy do Roman Rock. If they were gonna do Cody Rock, it should have been a SummerSlam. Oh, it's gonna be at. We gotta choke him out. Be at. Oh, oh, no, no. Gunther usually physically dominates his opponent, but he's having to like try to like choke Orton out. Yeah, because he knows. He's hurting, and he wants this match to be it over. Mm-hmm. 
I still think I don't know. What? Maybe WrestleMania should be a triple threat match for the world title between Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, and CM Punk. Mm-hmm. But I, I know I hate Gunther to lose the belt before Mania, but it feels like that's where the money feud is. Those three. Oh! Woo! Oh, he was trying to go for a, is a like a standing RKO or cutter. Jumped out of his back. Yeah. We'll see where the where we go for Mania. It's still a while to towards Mania. Mm. Oh. Oh, this has easily been one of Randy's best matches in years. Oh, oh fuck! I blinked, Nick. We blinked. <laughs> like, oh shit! I think this is it. This could be it, bruh. Yeah. He's got to try to choke him out. Ow. It's not going to tap. This is the, this is a kind of protect him. He's out. He choked the word out. That was a good match. Yeah. Easily one of Randy's best matches in years. I did pick this one for my last. I thought it was going to be the best match of the night. Honestly, I'm surprised the tag match the tag match prior was as good as it was. Oh, the mixed tag match, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I figured that was really good, pretty good. Love it. Still selling the his uh arm injury from the match. Yeah. The ring general. His reign continues. Oh damn, he put that on with ease. Oh no wait, it has a stupid Velcro thing. Fucking bullshit Velcro. That's that one. Oh my god, a near fall on that one. That was a really good match. I want to finally go on social media again, but I want to make sure nothing else happens before the, this this pay review officially ends. Yeah, here he was about to try to do RKO again. Can I get it? Because he's Austrian. Yep, yep. He's a Tominator. Yeah. Another Austrian. It's pretty good Terminator. Have you seen a Terminator anime? I don't know. Maybe it should. You know what's coming out? The ink. Oh. The, it's gotten... coming out the in canon in canon date of Judgment Day. Oh, didn't that already happen? That's like it's already went out today. Then yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, Code of Honor, Nick. Code of Honor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great ball for Gunther. Where does Orton go from here? 
Back to SmackDown, obviously. I know I, I know what we're gonna be doing after this. And that was Bash in Berlin 2024. You know what the well, you know what letter the the word Berlin starts with? B? That's right. This was a pretty standard international B show, but there were some highlights we will discuss. Hey, it's B and B. Thank you. Um, yeah, we started W Championship match between or between Orange between Rose and Owens, and that was that was exciting. That was fun. the The crowd was great throughout the entire night. There was great back and forth between both guys, carrying our moves that you know they were going to pull off. Then it got to a point where Cody's knee was starting to act up. And Kevin Owens took a bit too long to finally take advantage of that, which um, after some attack fights outside the ring, ultimately led to Kevin getting defeated, doing the code of honor before, doing the code of honor after, hugging each other. It was a fairly good match. Um, let's let's just, let's try to stop this trend. Uh, let's stop let's stop this trend of like Cody. Opening the mat, opening the pay per views. He is the WWE champion. But I think like... they, usually, like, if they have the world heavyweight title main eventing, they kind of figure they can start with the WWE title because Cody mm-hmm. is good at getting the crowd pumped up in that first match. Yeah, like they went with they, they had three big matches tonight. They had the both world title matches and Punk McIntyre, and they buffered them with the two other matches. So, and also they say. I think Seth, I don't know if Seth Rollins said this. If you're not going on last, you want to go on first. Mm-hmm. So I can understand that. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. About, about the match itself. I, have you, was that all your thoughts on the match itself? Yeah, that's all I really got. Okay. So, yeah, the match was good. It was, it's, it was not really too much to say. Like a bunch of really cool, good spots. This was a standard face versus face match where they're trying to one up each other. The real story of the match, Owens didn't give in to his killer instinct, the old Kevin Owens. He didn't mm-hmm. do the pop up. He didn't take advantage of Rose's knee at the beginning. He didn't do the pop up power bomb on the apron, which arguably could have won the match and ultimately cost him. And Owens, you know, he acted like he was okay. He was like, oh, I lost. But, you know, I've seen this before where a baby face doesn't take advantage. And he kind of realized he needs to go back to his killer instinct if he needs to win. So I don't know. Is this the end? Is this, is this it between Rose and Owens? I guess we'll see on SmackDown. Cool. Okay. So next up, hold on a sec. Uh, next up was 40 women's tag team titles. Yeah. Unholy Union defending against Team Strong EST. Um, yeah, this is a good tag title match um short as yeah it was what it was i think both i think this is the best jays looked in a while in day mm-hmm. um or ever in day depends on how you look at it and um yeah it was a fine match nothing much to write home about ultimately it's thanks to you know combined effort between Jade and Bianca that they um win the titles back. Yeah, man, the last three title changes have all happened in Europe for the women's tag titles. Like Bianca it's... and Jade won in France, Unholy Union won in Scotland, and Bianca and Jade now just won them back in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, um, next up. I didn't even say anything about it. I was just going to say the match. Because it really isn't much to say, I guess. It was it was fine. It was okay. It was, like, I was going to say, it was okay. Like, they, I figured they were going to put the belts back on Bella and Carmagill because they didn't do their match at SummerSlam, which is why I thought they originally lost the belts at Clash of the Castle. Mm-hmm. So I guess they're, they're stretching this out to WrestleMania, maybe. Yeah. So I guess in the meantime... They can feud with the Fusion Ford Engine Collective, whatever they're yeah. called. For Ford now. Engine Collective. The DMV Conglomeration. <laughs> Next up, we have 
CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre in a was it four corner strap match? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this was fun. This was about what I expected. Just just you know, big old no DQ match. Them taking advantage of the strats back and forth. A lot of great stuff from both guys. Um, amazing. Love when Punk gets back in the ring and just out of nowhere, bam, with the Claymore was great. They even slightly recreated uh, a spot from Great American Bash. Not the one I was thinking of, but a different one, which was clever. Um, yeah, when um, McIntyre picking up uh, CM Punk, he touched the corner. Punk took the corner. That's very JBL, Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. Um, Drew eventually whipping out his, I mean, Punk's bracelet. Um, Let me just whip this thing out. Ugh. Oh, uh, yeah, let's, point it out before we get oh. to, let's really emphasize the audience for this point. That thing was on his junk. He, he pulled that out of his tights. So remember that for when we get to what, what Punk does with it later. He makes out with it. Um, so oh, yeah. next, but then I, I thought the finish, I thought the, I thought the finish was clever though. Um, ultimately after every, like, he, before every single, he touched every single corner. Punk keeps on hitting Drew with the, the GTS, um, with the GTS, with the last one of him grabbing a bracelet before he hits the last uh, post to uh, win. So yeah, this Ooh. is uh, yeah, definitely going to be going to Bad Blood. It's a Hell in a Cell match. Mm. We're not kidding. This is gonna be a Hell in a Cell match. Um, this I think there's only going to be two. Like they've been trying to focus on one men's, one women's. The men's will definitely be Drew Punk. I think I don't know what the women's should be. Women should probably be Rhea Liv, but like I don't. I think the show might be one Hell in a Cell. Like I don't, you don't have to have two. Well, I mean, one men's and one women's. That's why you, know, you don't have to always have a men's and women's equivalent. You can just have one of the like Rhea Liv. Could probably be something different. How about a first blood match? It's called Bad Blood. But well, what did you think of the match? I thought I thought it was really good. I like the SummerSlam match better, not just because Drew won that, but because mm-hmm. Seth Rollins also made that match really fun. There was like a lot of like the recreation of that Undertaker Shawn Michaels match. Like I did like the SummerSlam match more, but this one was still good. I mean. It's hard sometimes to make a match like this work where you have to touch all four corners instead of like going for a pin or submission. Mm-hmm. But they, they made it work, and Punk, it was clever how Punk having... it's, it's Drew still looks strong in this match because Punk had to hit him with GTS every single time in order to hit those four corners, and Drew wasn't pin or submitted, so it doesn't hurt him too bad. And there were, mul- there were both points where both guys would have won if it was a pin or submission match because Drew hit him with that Claymore, and then mm-hmm. Punk got Drew to, to like tap out yeah that strap shooter so both guys still look really good so and punk got this win here so now they're one one and punk's got the bracelet back so let's kind of move on from the bracelet and yeah go on to hell in a cell where i hope drew wins okay i have the quote i was telling you that uh owens when asked about punk or what owens said about punk he mm-hmm. goes we never talk we have no reason to talk we're not friends we're not. We don't. You don't. We're just not. I don't know. We have no reason to talk. If we work together, we will talk, but just not a thing we do. That sounds like a Donald Trump speech. No, I said <laughs> I, I said this. No, my my comment on this was this boils down to just because we went to the same high school at the same time doesn't mean anything. <laughs> That's really true. <laughs> I said the first thing I thought when I read that quote, it's like yeah, we went to the high school, but we weren't fucking friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We never friends. It was okay. <laughs> oh, and Drew finally responded about the Jack Perry photo. Yeah. He took, he's like, we were on the same flight. He was just right in front of me. I had a chat with him. Lovely lad. His girlfriend's really nice. So that's cool. Anna J's, fortunately, Anna J's still taken. Fuck. Uh, flying to LA. And just said, hey, we should take a picture together. We're both wrestlers. I'll put it on the internet. Give you a little rub. And people reacted crazy. Because they both hate CM Punk. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's no way I show you later. It's MGF related. But like, um, later. But yeah. So yeah. Drew. Drew. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Kevin Owens. Yeah, we're not friends. Drew McIntyre. Why? I just want to take a picture of this nice lad who's a wrestler as well. <laughs> Drew's a master heel. 
He's amazing. He's fucking. It's easily one of like the only downside with this his run right now is that like he's having the the shortest world title reign of the year in all pro wrestling. Yeah. Um. So next up, and a match. I, I'm gonna be honest. Excuse me. Wasn't expecting a whole lot, but surprisingly really entertaining. Which was the Terror Twins versus the Judgment Club. Uh, in this case, uh, Dom and Liv. Yeah, some great stuff overall. I think my first favorite spot during this match was when, like, Dom was trying to create distraction for Rhea. For, uh, trying to create distraction for Liv. And just as Liv was getting back, getting up to attack Rhea from behind, Rhea uh, just, like, instantly pops her in the face and stares right back at Dom. <laughs> I love that spot. I'm like, she's smart. <laughs> Um, ooh, that crucifix bomb thing lived in. Mm -hmm. Um, that was, I, the step was a bit strange, but it was really clever. I gotta give her props. The double racers edge at one point from the terror twins. The, whoa. When judgment clubs start, uh, interfering and stuff. And then Liv does that sick ass sunset flip into the barricade. She into the, the barricade. Fucking, yeah. She hits the corner too. Like, holy crap. But ultimately, the Terror Twins are able to stop Judgment Club long enough for uh, Rhea to get her very sexy pin on, uh, hit the Reptile to get her very sexy pin on Liv to win. So, Terror Twins won, Judgment Club zero. Um, I should have seen this coming, honestly, because of how dominant they were making Judgment Club looking. But, like, eh, it is what it is. It was still a very fun match. A great penultimate last to lead into what we were getting in the main event. What did you think? It was, yeah, it was a fun mixed tag match. Uh, got a lot of really good spots. Liv really showcased why she's a lot better than people say she is. Mm -hmm. um, she's definitely good in the ring. Uh, Dom played a really good, you know, sneaky chicken shit heel. Uh, Priest got some good power up spots. Rhea got some, like, both of them did, both Rhea and Priest. And definitely set up what's going on, what's going to happen next in this feud which is going to be Priest versus Balor and Ripley versus Morgan. Right. Both those matches probably happening in bad blood. But yeah, this was a good, fun mixed tag match. And, you know, this feud's been really fun. Like, it took, like, the setup was 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 great. SummerSlam went exactly how, how I thought it would, which isn't always a bad thing. It just means the story makes sense. Um, And, yeah, this was, was just fun. Like, it was just a fun match. Yeah. Yeah, like a very team. Yeah, obvious, very obviously this match over. I know if Rhea gained a pan of live, you know how kayfabe works. So she's gonna want a match for the world heavyweight title, uh, rematch for the women's world heavyweight title. So mm. we'll be getting it soon. Uh, probably at Bad Blood. Mm. I, yeah, I know what we were saying before, but there's a there is a small possibility that may be the women's Hell in a Cell match. We'll see. Um, I no, to be fair though, I think I still see Liv retaining, but like. I think that's where it's gonna go. Where it's gonna lead it to. Could go either way, depending on where they want to go. Yeah. So next up, hold on a sec. Let's see. Um, next up, the World Heavyweight Championship. Walter defending against Randy Orton. This card was great during this match. I don't know if they were just like trying to stay awake or something, but their chants were so random during this. The musical chant. They started doing a wave, which you know we usually boo, but like at the same time, like. They probably been there a while, and like they're just trying to keep a, stay like keep themselves entertained. Well, speaking of which, we do have to. They did announce that this is now the break, record breaking highest grossing arena yeah. for WWE history. Well, Not which, for inflation. Well, with the prices they charge for for like uh, air, uh, what was it uh out of country out of US uh pay per views like not surprised with that record, um. No, this was good. I think what the best part was it was like Randy got the upper hand first and then started attacking his right arm. Was it uh, Walter's right arm a lot? So one of, the, one of the positive things with that was he took away or took away Walter's power bomb, which he tried different times. And I don't know if it was just me, but at one point, did you think Walter was going to say fucking just go for a pile driver? <laughs> Like, Maybe. I swear to God, there was, like, twice he tried it, and I thought, oh, he's going to say, fucking, just go for a pile driver instead. Like, a, like a good old-fashioned gotch-style pile driver. <laughs> like, 
Um, but yeah, luckily Lil Nate was very like lay him do their own thing, commentary table shenanigans, steel chair shenanigans, steel was yes, yeah, steel step shenanigans, all sorts of that word, like just utterly ridiculous. But I uh, yeah, ultimately, uh Walter gets into desperation mode and goes for a signature chokehold, which Randy will get Randy gets while well, Randy gets out of it twice, ultimately it's the Third time's a charm, and he's able to uh, lock it in. Oren passes out. Walter retains in his home country. And we have a code of honor at the end as well. I'm just going to call it that, even the time. So I'm going to call that for now a code of honor. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah, easily one of Oren's best match in a while. Definitely better than the King of Ring match. Like, the King of Ring finals match. Like, great stuff overall. Um... Yeah, curious where Orton goes from here. I know you want him to eventually take on Cody. We're going to have to see on that. But what did you think of the match? It was a really, really good match. Um, I mean, these two, two of the best WWE has right now. Even Orton at this stage of his career can still put on fantastic matches. Um, yeah. Really good start. Really good first favorite defense for Gunther. It sets the tone It sets the tone for the, his, what his reign is going to be going forward. We're mm-hmm. in for a good ride. Uh, but yeah, like you mentioned, there was, there was a lot of great spots. Both these guys were portrayed as equals to each other. Like Gunther usually dominates whoever he's in the ring with, but re- it really showed how much of a legend Randy Orton is to be able to go toe to toe with somebody like Gunther. Really gave Gunther, also made Gunther look really good that he can go toe to toe with a legend like Randy Orton. Now I'll go toe to toe with him, but actually choke him out. Like no, mm. like he didn't he didn't finish off Orton with the power move. He had to literally choked the life out of them and yeah afterwards orton gave him a seal of approval uh you know which you know works as gunther's in his the country where he made a name for himself mm-hmm. of course like he'll go back to being like despicable heel once he's back in the states yeah we'll have to see who the next challenger for gunther's gonna be there's plenty of names to choose from yeah definitely but yeah, overall that was uh Bib. B and B. Bib Bib Bib. Um we'll start with you. Okay, since there's only five matches on this card, we we'll only ask you for two of your favorite matches. Aww. And as well as your uh oh yeah, overall thoughts, top two matches, and uh letter grade. I mean the only match I wasn't that into was the women's tag match. Everything else I enjoyed to different degrees. But top two, though. Well, number one is the main event. The main event was really, really good. I'm torn on number two because the mixed tag match was a lot of fun, but the WWE title match was well done. This, mm-hmm. this um, What's what I'm looking for? Uh, technically sound. It was right. a technically sound match. And the Punk McIntyre had some fun moments as well. Mm. So picking up picking two, number two is kind of hard. Uh, I'll go with buy a hair Punk McIntyre. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey Punk McIntyre, yeah, I'll. So yeah, well, how are we title and Punk oh, you're and you're great. Oh my great. Hmm. I know it's a B show, but I think it's it was, it was still a really good show. Uh, I'm gonna give it a minus. Mm, okay. Um, there is nothing really that bothered me. I, like the women's tag match wasn't that interesting. Yeah, this yeah for me overall, yeah, very very much what we got with Clash and uh, Backlash France edition this year. Uh, overall, crap. It's it, it feels like verbatim listing off what you know. The positives with the with an international pay per view like this is crowds always great. They always have standout. Mo- the crowd always has standout moments, and the matches, for the most part, usually stand out. You know, with maybe one, like maybe one, maybe two duds here and there. Uh, this show, yeah, though women's tag title match, not the best on the card, but they still put in a good effort. Um, and my two favorite matches. Mm, you know what? The last two matches of the night. 
uh, World Heavyweight Title match and uh, was it the uh, Terror Sorry. Twins versus Judgment Club? Uh, the, the, I think those were both really good. And then like I said it was easily one of Orton's best matches in years, mm-hmm. like best singles matches in years. <laughs> honestly, great stuff. And I'm just gonna go with solid B. I, I appreciate your A your A minus. I'm glad you had a great time. Solid B for me. It, a it's still a good show. Not even a B plus. Nope, just a B. No. Like, I, yeah, look, I'm being honest. It's just, it's just going to be a B for me. It doesn't mean it's a bad show. Mm-hmm. It's just not one. This is not one of those shows I'm going to come back and watch. Well, with my A minus and your B, it averages out to a B plus. Yeah, my bad. But, like, yeah, it's it's not one of those shows I'm going to come back and want to re. It's not one of those shows I'm going to even remotely consider back, come back and rewatch. You know, it's just, it was there, it happened, and now. We have basically nearly a whole month before uh, the next one, which is uh, Bad Blood in October. Oh, man, right? Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Yeah, we got Bad Blood, and then Crown Jewel, and then Survivor Series. That's correct. And so that's going to do it, folks, for our reactions to Bash in Berlin. So other than that, if you're new to the channel, you can hit the like button. If you want to talk to us about more stuff like this, comment down below. If you want to share us around, share it around. And if you like it's just a little bit more than anybody else, when it comes to talking about stuff you can do in Berlin, hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon as well. Let us know what you thought of Bash in Berlin. What did you think of the matches? What did you think of the audience? What was your favorite moment of the night? Let us know in the comments down below. Put down what you thought of our reactions overall. But most importantly, we thank you for watching. Now, of course, Nick, aside from his channel, where can they find you elsewhere on the internet? Well, you can find me over on the socials. You can find me on the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the Twitter X, Twitter X's babies. Yeah. We also, you know, we just hang out here on YouTube. There's another fun YouTube channel. Not, not, not as great as this channel, obviously, but still a great channel that I help out with from time to time. It's called The Y-Files. It's got hit 4 million subscribers. Not bad for, not bad for a guy who has goldfish, you know? When this guy has goldfish, they talk about all kinds of fun stuff. They talk about conspiracies, government cover-ups, monsters in the night, all that fun stuff. So go ahead and check them out. I know once you watch that channel, though, you're going to love Hecklefish. So why don't you just go ahead and go to their website and go to their shop. Get yourself a Hecklefish t-shirt, a Hecklefish mug. You can fit that whole fist right in there. Fits that mug all day, all night long. And while you're at it, go ahead and get yourself a Hecklefish plushie. It has all his catchphrases. So go ahead. You know you love Hecklefish. You know he's a strict but fair lord. Yes. And uh, you can catch our friend who wasn't here this weekend, our friend Mo Brothers, at on the socials at Afro Mo Bro. And of course, on uh, of course, you can check out our reactions to the last LED pay per view we did, which was SummerSlam. Yes. You can check out our last pay per view reactions we did, which was All in London, yes. All in 2024 London edition. And on a, of course, on the next episode of One, Two, Three Wrestling involving WWE pay per views, we'll be back on the anniversary of the one, the only Hell in a Cell match as the one, as an Attitude Era pay per view makes its grand return at WWE Bad Blood 2024. Multiple years, like over a, over a decade. It's been a decade. The last one was 2004. There's only been three. Over two decades later, we are back for bad blood. So until next time, though, I'm Kristen. I'm Nick Slade. And that has been a very Berlin-filled episode of 1, 2, 3 Wrestling. And we will see you guys later. Break the walls down. The Berlin walls. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out any of our previous reactions, as well as one of our other SRB shows, check out one of the playlists down below. And if you want to check us out in the social universe, you can find us on Twitter and start us at Super React Bros. As well as on Facebook at Super Reaction Bros.